Police, and I hope you would join me in just a moment of silence for Tony, please. Thank you very much, everybody. Also, just to let you know, we were in executive session. Chairman uh, Lou Fiore, Vice Chairman Ginny Higley, Vice Chairman Linda DeGray, Commissioner Alimo, Commissioner Grillo, Commissioner D'Antonio, Commissioner Petronella. No motions were made and no votes were taken in that executive session. Could, uh, Mr. Chair, could you also acknowledge the uh, staff that was yes, present? Yes. Uh, uh, Lori Witten, head of the planning department, and uh, Ben Winter, and also our attorneys. Uh, and for, I'm sorry, and, and Karan Mumjar. I forgot he's on. Sorry, Karan. Okay. Uh, and just if you could name the attorneys by name, please. Yep, Maria Eldon and Jim Talberg. And, and um, uh, Ms. Bosey. Kimberly Bossy. Bossy, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Okay, fire evacuation announcement. Oh, first of all, thank you all for wearing your masks. So I guess I do not have to read that, and you are distancing. So thank you very much, everyone. Much appreciated. Thank you. In case of a fire, there are two ways to exit the chambers right behind you through that way, and then out through this door, and then down a the hallway or straight ahead. In either case, once out of the building, please walk a safe distance away from the building. Okay. Approval in the minutes of the January 13th, 2022 meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved, Mr. So moved by Commissioner Alamo. Is there a second? Second, second by Vice Chairman Higley. Any discussion? Yes, uh, Commissioner, on page three, um, Tony, uh, town attorney report, uh, last sentence, it said, Mr. Winter replied that he believes it's, it is supposed to be Maria if we could include her last name and title, because Maria could be anybody. anybody, and she is an assistant town attorney. And 10 years from now, somebody reads these, they're going to know, who's Maria? So, so you'd like it to read oh. Maria Elston, yeah. yes, town with, attorney? Town yes. Attorney. Yes. Stop, please. I forgot to do the roll call. Oh, OK. Again, because we our secretary is no longer with us, we forgot to do the roll call, so we're going to back up okay. a step, please. All Sorry right. about that, everybody. Um, please, Lou temporary secretary. <laughs> Lou Fri uh, Frigno. All right. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I wish I had his money. <laughs> if everybody remembers him, right? Arnold Schwarzenegger's buddy. <laughs> See, you confused me. <laughs> it's not my job. <laughs> yes. Thank you for filling in tonight. Thank you. Not a problem. Uh, Linda DeGray here. Ginny Higley. Here. John Petronella. Here. Frank Alimo. Here. Vinny Grillo. Here. Karan Maj Majdamar. I'm getting it, Karan. I'm getting it. Uh, I'll speak to you one more time. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Christian D'Antonio. Here. Thank you. And Christian D'Antonio will be, uh, as the alternate, uh, sitting in for uh, Tony DePace tonight. And Vinny will be here for anyone who has to recruit himself. So now we'll get back to the minutes. Thank you. There was a motion made on the minutes to add, what page was that, Linda, please? Page three. Page three, uh, under town attorney report, last line. Yes. To add Maria's last name and title. That staff would get the proper spelling of her last name and her title, and please um, add that to the minutes. So there's a motion made to accept the, any, any other discussion? There's a motion made to accept the minutes as amended. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? None. Unanimous to accept the minutes as amended. I also would appreciate the uh, privilege of the chair if someone would please make a motion to add to the other business section, item D, appointments. I would appreciate if someone would make that motion, please. So moved. Second. Sure. Second motion made by uh, Vice Chairman Higley, second of Vice Chairman DeGray to add item D, to other business appointments. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Is there a zoning enforcement report? There's not a zoning enforcement report. There is the uh, the spreadsheet yep. that was updated by the zoning enforcement officer that was in your packet. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. That was very useful information. All right. So now we're on to public participation. 
At this point in the meeting, the Planning and Zoning Commission welcomes comments, concerns, and opinions relating to planning and zoning in Enfield from anyone who is present, provided that no one may discuss any matter of business at this time that is already elsewhere on the agenda, any matter that is part of an open public hearing of the Commission, or any matter where a decision of the Commission may be pending. And as I mentioned prior, there is the, the 35 Bacon that is a decision that's pending, so you cannot comment on that. Other than that, if you would like to come up and comment about anything else other than what I just said, <laughs> which is kind of limited, uh, please feel free to do so. We welcome your comments. I didn't think so, but I'll, I'll ask three times. Is there anyone who would like to say anything? Participation? Yes. Please come up and state your name and address, please, for the record. My name is Sherry Jackson, and I live at 119 Cottage Road. So I'm just asking for some clarification about the pending items and your rules. So will there be an opportunity at some point to speak on the a particular pending item? We don't know yet. I cannot answer that. Hopefully, I'll have, if you, hopefully we'll have an answer to that tonight. But I cannot answer that at this time. So how will we be able to obtain that information? If you just kind of wait around an hour, you might have that answer. OK, wonderful. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to come in front of the Planning Zoning Commission? Seeing that, the public participation is closed for tonight. Now we're going to go on to old public hearing. Secretary, please read the note application. We're going to open the hearing. Um, I don't have it. Let's see if I have it here. <laughs> Again, sorry, sorry. It's okay. Temporary secretary. She's doing the best. I'm, I'm looking. I don't think we have to because we've already opened no, it. You don't have to? No. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, you don't need to reread right. the, the to, notice yeah. because it was All continued. Right. Sorry. Thank you. We don't have to reread it. We have old public hearing. Is the applicant here or not? The, um, the Martins for PH3021? Please. Yeah, please, why don't you come on up and. Good evening. Good evening. I want you to identify yourselves and your address, please. Uh, Peter and Kim Martin, 9 Overhill Road. Thank you. And basically, we have everything in front of us, so why don't you just give us a brief description about you know what you're trying to accomplish on the property, please. Okay. Um, my sister is retiring from uh, uh, Connecticut DOC and is looking to get out of her house. And as she gets a little bit older, looking for a place a little closer to us to just kind of take care of her a little bit. Um, she's in the middle of adopting a five-year-old. And... It's basically going to be, uh, for all intents and purposes, I guess the village that raises the child. So we're all going to kind of pitch in together and raise this little girl, which is her granddaughter. So this is an apartment above a two-car garage, um, 600 square foot apartment. Um, plumbing, everything electrical is all connected to our house. She does have a separate entrance, but also has access to our house. That's about it. It's it's an in-law apartment. <coughs> Thank you. Is there any commissioners that have some questions? Yeah, I do because um, under my understanding is this apartment has to it, at some point when your sister and granddaughter, whatever the relationship is, no longer live there, it has to become part of the house. And what I'm looking at here, it looks like a separate apartment. And I understand that you're going to live there until whatever, but you sell the house. I see this turning into a separate apartment. It doesn't really look like it can be blended into this house the way it's set up. And, and that, unless staff can help me out with that, um, I thought it had to just kind of like you could add to the house in some way so that the in-law apartment 
can then later become part of the house. This looks like, and not that you would do it. I'm just saying, you sell your house, whoever lives there next yeah. can do whatever they want. This looks like if I was gonna buy a house and saw an apartment on, I'm like, hey, let's buy this house. We can make some money, renting it out, help pay the mortgage. I'm just, and they may not follow the rules. So if you could help me out with this a little bit. So when I had the architect design this, it was for the sole purposes of Wendy moving in. Uh, I guess we didn't realize the parameters of what an in-law apartment actually needed to be. Uh, in hindsight, I guess I, had done a, I should have done a little more research, but at this point, I don't know how much of those plans we can change as this is actually three quarters of the way built. At that point, I didn't even realize I had to get a permit to have my sister move into it. I understand. This is something I just and, found and out. So at this point, I don't even know what to do. Um, can it be changed? Long term, yeah, it could be. Um, but I was under the impression that it was, from the conversation I had a few weeks ago, as long as we used it for the sole purposes of a family member, we would have to come back before the board every two years and right. reapply for that permit. No changes can be made in that time that I, right. I can't and, imagine. Right, and, and that's why I'm asking staff if they can help me out with this a little bit. Yeah, and to my knowledge, um, even if they were to sell the property to someone else and someone to move in, if they were to use that with the same use, they would have to come before and do the same registration and same permit because now it's a new new owner. Right, but so. I'm afraid and that, was my question. that they sell the house, the next person... You know, oh, my uh, brother's best friend's sister needs a place to live, not a relationship. They rent it out as a apartment, not an in-law apartment. I, th that's the only concern I have with the way it looks now, because it doesn't look like it could be uh, part of the house, integrated part of the house, like. If I added onto the back of my house a larger uh, in-law, a room, put a like a little suite in there, later on take the kitchen out, still ha can make it into a, a living area, a bedroom or an additional bedroom or a living room, whatever. But this looks completely separated from the house because it, the way it looks here. It has its own entrances through the garage and through the back, but there's no continuity to go into to be part of the house. Like a bonus room, usually you go upstairs, it's open as part of the house. Yes. If, I may, if I may, it's, it proves it's a chair. And my impression with in-law apartments, it didn't, doesn't it not have to have an access from the inside? And it doesn't look like this one really does. Right. That's. I mean, that's that's the dilemma we have here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. In-law have to have access from inside. I can tell you why it doesn't. If you look at the original plans, I made a mistake when I was building this because I saw the plans and saw the, the framing of it being obnoxiously large for that neighborhood. So I called my, my architect and I said, what would happen if I took the ceiling height of the garage and dropped it down to nine feet instead of 10 feet and made this garage a little bit smaller so it didn't look so horrible? And he said, that won't be a problem at all. Unfortunately, what it actually did create that we didn't realize until the framing was done is the access that was supposed to go from there into our breezeway, ultimately, which would have been our living room eventually, the ceiling height was no longer high enough to have a doorway there. So the original intent was actually, coincidentally, because I didn't know this was a criteria, it was actually supposed to have at the bottom of her stairs to be able to go into our breezeway. As soon as my architect said, yeah, no, it's not a problem, go ahead and do that, to put the kibosh on that whole thing. So at this point, I don't even know how I could create an entrance that went directly into the house. I, I mean, the entrance is the bottom of our stairs, is our French doors. It's right, literally, 
side out, by side yeah, doors. Out and then in. How I could enclose that and create a wall there, I don't know if I could or couldn't. I mean, if you told me I had to, I guess I'd have to figure it out. But um, that's why there is no access. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Did you, did you finish for now? Uh, yeah, for now. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. Sir, I, I'm sorry. I don't have it right in front of me. Off the top of your head, how far is that building? Oh. It is. Uh, how far is it? It's this. How far is that building away from your house? It's attached to it. What's that? It's attached to it. It is attached. Two car garage with a breezeway Breeze slash living room right all attached to the house. And according to uh, the submitted plans, there is there is the access door going from the breezeway living room to the landing to then to the the hall that goes above the garage. Direct. Oh, so, OK. As long as it's attached, if I'm not mistaken, with a detached, as long as it's attached to the house, you're okay. Oh, it is definitely attached. Have, even if you wanted to, just a suggestion, two by six like a trellis, go over the top. There's your roof. Problem solved. I can do that. I can definitely do that. That can be an access. It's got a roof, it's just, just attached. Just put, it's like a trellis, but you don't have to get all crazy if your height's different. As long as it's attached, there's a walkway to get in there. I don't, I, I don't understand what, what, what the problem is. So, I mean, if the question is also regarding the future use, hypothetically say this homeowner sells, sells the home, um, the new homeowner would, if they wanted to use this as an accessory um, in-law apartment, would still have to come before and do the registration. If they didn't follow what's required by the regulations, there could be a potential violation if they were to use it as some kind of two-family or unregistered in-law apartment. I guess we I did have a question about that whole process, which I'll ask it when they're when they're done. You see, our dilemma here is you don't. I break, get it. Yes, thank you. I don't want to. I don't want to repeat again. So that's that's our, it seems to be our dilemma. Mr. Petronella. Yeah, uh, the breezeway living room. Uh, I'm a little bit confused. Is that a heated space? Yes. Okay, because a breezeway to me is an unheated space, and a living room is so. But it says breezeway slash living room, so. Mm -hmm. It, it is a heated space. The, the future goal is that wall that is on the, I guess that would be the east side of that breezeway. That wall, hopefully, eventually, down the road, when I get out of this $160,000 debt, yeah. will get pulled down, and that will actually create that as our living room. So I always called it my breezeway living room because right now it is a breezeway. Yeah. Eventually, down the road, it is supposed to be part of our yeah. part of the main living space. The, the um, it does have heat because with the, plum, the HVAC permit that we pulled, there's actually a three unit um, mini split that heats the apartment upstairs, the garage, as well as that room. Okay, because the, the, issue, the issue really is, is that the uh, in-law apartment is supposed to be integrated with the main house, meaning people can flow freely from the whole house into the in-law apartment and so forth. The way this is, it's kind of borderline, uh, because you do have a door separating it uh, that goes that gets to the garage landing area yep. and then another door that gets to the stairs that goes up to the apartment so there's that isolation there that's kind of borderline uh, and then you have that separate uh, entry in the back from the outside to the stair that goes directly up so um, I, I see that you um, have integrated the main house to the living room breezeway. Uh, you, you know, you removed the door there. Um, so, uh, again, I'm like, it's borderline what I'm looking at. Is it integrated? Uh, so, I don't know. So, as it's built right now, if you're looking at that staircase and you come down to the bottom of that staircase, there is a door that goes, in theory, outdoors. Yes. What I did is I actually, if you look to the right, is where the French doors are that go into our home. What I, well, originally it was just supposed to be a couple of staircases and it's actually not now. It is actually a six foot by 12 foot landing 
So when she comes down out of her apartment, she literally takes a right into our French doors, into our living room. It is something that at this point, almost unavoidable because of my architect. It's not something that was done by design. It's something that was done out of necessity to give her access to our house. Aside from putting a roof on the top of that landing, there is no other way I can give her access at this point because of the architect's decision to let us drop the roof. That access is, is from the bottom of the stairs. You have to go outside. Currently, you walk outside and immediately walk back inside. Okay. So, I mean, that's, and, and there lies, you know, part of the problem is, is that's not really integrated with the rest of the house. I, and, and I understand what, what happened and why it happened. I, I do. I, you know, you lowered, you lowered it, which, which knocked off the headroom for the doorway, right? For, I'm sorry, for say the that garage. Again? Yep. When you lowered the floor, you lowered the headroom, right. which, lowered which the eliminated the door. From the living room into right. her, yeah. Right. So now we could put a door there. Unfortunately, it would be a door that would only have a, I think the measurement ended up being 70, six inches is now all I have allotted, yeah, which you need, doesn't give me a legal door. Correct. You're, you're, you're right. I could, I'll still knock a door in there ha happily, but I, no. I got a feeling it doesn't meet the code. It's going to beat me it, up on it, that one. It technically wouldn't meet the code and you'd have to go to the building court of appeals to probably get a waiver on that. So, okay. So at this point I'm stuck. All right. I'm all set. Sure. 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 Uh, so that that uh, access to the inside would be provided through the garage, right? So that still exists. Is that correct? It's or, or yeah, we're she saying comes that down that staircase and exits straight out the door, and okay. then straight into my. So, okay, so we're saying that that second door from the landing, that 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 was the door we're talking about. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. She was supposed to be able to take a right at the bottom of her stairs. She was yeah. supposed to be able to take a right and be able to go right into our living room. There was supposed to be a doorway right there on her, at that point she's facing the front of the garage, right on her left would have been a door entering our house. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The original plan. Sense. Yep, and, and I think we see that on the plans here. Sorry? Oh, we see that on the plans here, that door going to the inside. Yeah. It's thanks to my architect. <laughs> Do there any other questions from Commissioner, yep. Commissioner Lima? <clears throat> yeah, so a couple of things. First of all, on the future, and we don't know what's going to happen in the future about somebody else um, <clears throat> possibly purchasing the property and making an apartment. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, this in-law apartment is under 1,000 square feet, correct? Six, uh, 600. Right. So that takes care of it being an illegal, a legal apartment. It could never, okay. Right? I, I think and maybe staff will help us on that, or it could be a loft or... 600 square feet? According to this, it's, it's, it meets the under 750 square feet. He's under? Yeah. For an apartment? Okay, but you have separate utilities too, right? No, it's all attached utilities. Okay, so that so I'm just trying to get away from it becoming something in the future and try to focus on right now and how we can figure out a way to uh, make this work. I intentionally made all the utilities attached to the house just to be able to take <clears throat> it away from her responsibilities. So if it was a, an apartment, normally it would be separate utilities, right, I think? Just um, the difference between an accessory dwelling unit and an in-law apartment is that an accessory dwelling, dwelling unit is a separate entity upon itself and is treated differently from a building code perspective. You've got more firewalls and things of that nature, where the in-law apartment is, is integral to the house. Whether it be through a garage or not, it is still integral to the house and is not considered an apartment by building code definition. So this can't become an apartment? I'm, I'm, not based, theoretically, not it can't. Not based on the current configuration. Correct. So now on the, on the other part, the landing. So it comes down to a landing, which is open to the open to outside. Guy. And then you take the left and it goes into your house or the right, which comes to down. Right. Yeah. And then it, there's doors. Yes. Is there any way you could take that landing area that's exposed to outside and frame it in, make it a hallway, um, unheated because maybe you won't need any heat or utilities or 
I'm just throwing it out there. Um, just completely box that in, close it, put a roof on it. The only and make it put a little bench there, put some flowers there, or something. I don't know. The only and I, not a builder, but the only thing that I foresee being a problem is we've already, in order to keep the roof line of that living room below the bedroom window, our bedroom window, we had to reduce it to a 312 pitch. So if I actually take, continue that roof out to be able to cover that, an additional five feet or whatever I need there, six feet, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough pitch to get You mean water. for drain it, for water to run? Pitch for water to run? To, yeah, I don't, for drainage? I don't know if I can pitch the water off the roof. Um, can't help you with that because I'm not an engineer by any means. Right, so and I to I'm just question. throwing that out there for an idea to get you to have the integration. I think that everybody's talking about. All right, I I, I don't know, and maybe some of my other commissioner colleagues could chime in on that. Um, but I think, you know, the piece about it being an apartment. Let's just put that aside, down to future stuff, and see if we could figure this out for you. Thank you, Commissioner Higley. Is there an entrance for you to get from the garage to your house? Is there a way for mm -hmm. us to get from yes. our house into the garage? Yes. No. You have to walk outside to get to your That's, house? Oh. The problem we ran into was when that roof came down, that eliminated our access into the garage. Didn't you from say it was attached the to That's the house? Have. Didn't you say it was attached to the house? It's not it, attached uh, to the house? The garage. The garage. Is it right. attached to the house? Mm -hmm. It's attached, yes. How is it attached to the house? How is it attached? The breezeway. It's it's all. The, There's a room in between the garage and the house. You we can't call it the put breezeway. a door there where the That's, breezeway is? When we lowered the roof of the garage, uh, it lowered okay. the, the, the rafters. Now. So now yeah. to leave the living room to go into the garage, the rafters would be at your head. Right. That door is going to get eliminated. Right. That's the, it's, I think it's 76 inches is all right. we have now. Right. I would gladly put a door in there if I thought you guys would be okay with it. Well, we would be. I, my, my <laughs> wife would gladly have a door there, too. <laughs> Is there any other questions? Yeah. Commissioner D'Antoni? All right, so so reading reading uh, the regulation, it's not a strict. Uh, they don't we're not, need. We're not there yet. Let's with the public. We'll, then we'll discuss after the public talks. If you want, know, oh, sure. we have our discussion. Let's hold on on that. Is there any other questions for the applicant at this point? Any other questions for the applicant? Is there anyone in the? Why don't you hold up? This, hold, yep, staff. And then we have the public that needs to hear. We might be able to clarify some of the okay. things. Did, do you want to say something about the access or? No, he doesn't. Okay. All right. Um, so there are some sections of the regulations, although one of the things that the commission should find is that there is some sort of integration. But um, section 4.50.10B. 4 4 6A <laughs> and B. Well, I'll say B. It says when accessory apartment cannot be accommodated entirely within the existing single family dwelling in accordance with subsection A, which just says that you've got to have uh, no, uh, not result in finished floor area uh, for the existing single family be less than 800 square feet after conversion. Um, it says that it, it, it included it, I'm sorry. The accessory apartment may include additional finished floor area not to exceed 750 square feet. So that, that's, that's being met. And then D says, for the purposes of the section, an attached garage shall be considered existing finished floor area when converted to an accessory apartment. So it does kind of give you that, that inkling that it could be just the attached garage. It does, and an attached garage does not necessarily always have access to the house. Um, and number nine says, in addition to the additional finished floor area permitted above, an existing, an existing attached garage may be used for conversion to an accessory apartment. So, it, and it just says it shall have safe and convenient access to the outside. So, and the, we also do regulate the fact that they have to register every two years. And any, and as 
as uh, Ben had alluded to, they, any time anybody wants to use this with a new sale, they're going to have to register. So I, I personally think that they're meeting the intent of the regulation. But just, just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Which we hold. Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak on our behalf of this particular application? Anyone in the public would like to speak on our behalf of this application? I'm going to ask three times because I, I should, but Robert was order. Anybody in the public like to speak on behalf or against this application? Thank you. So now we can do a little bit, uh, we can do a little bit more. Any questions, anything more on our side before we start discussing? Anything you want to add before I let you go? Any questions from the commission? Does staff, staff have any more comments? No, I, I, thank you for reading that regulation. I, I, don't. Uh, I was just going to just reiterate in, in the regs, you know, there's the, um, the special use. If this was approved, it, it does uh, terminate upon death, relocation, or of the qualifying occupants in either unit. So if owner, like ownership changes hands, yep. it it would the use would terminate and the new occupant would have to come for the use again for approval and register. So, so I have a question for staff, and I think this is the appropriate time to ask. I mean, how are you, you know, in law apartments are getting more popular in Enfield, and I'm glad it was added to the regulation. Matter of fact, there's a beautiful one right across the street from me. Um, so how is staff actually monitoring this? Because every two years they have to come in. Do you have a, a database, a spreadsheet, where you have the list of all these and mm -hmm. with dates where they're when they expire and they're supposed to come in? Yeah, we, there is. There's, um, there's electronic files and there's also a, a binder. Um, I don't know what date it goes back to. I'd have to go back and look, but it's, uh, it's a list of the registered uh, in-law apartments. And you feel you know, pretty confident your people are coming in and going back through to review with you and, and, and refiling again. That's, that is happening. Yeah, I'm confident. And also, um, you know, there, it just uh, if there's any ever any kind of you know housing kind of complaints or if anyone thinks there's a kind of a, an, an illegal apartment situation going on, it gets inspected and you know we do our due diligence there and okay. look into it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Is there any other questions, uh, Karan? Do you have anything? Okay. I see you, Karan. Okay. It's all right. Thank you. Mr. Yep. Mr. Mr. Chair, if we're to go, if we're to go ahead and um, approve this. Is it possible to add another condition of approval that the board, the commission may want or a suggestion from staff? So everybody's comfortable with the registration piece. I know that's in the ordinance and the regulation already. Yep. Um, if there's anything else. Uh, Good question from staff. Is the condition needs to be, think needs to be added to this? Just As so everybody's satisfied? Condition? Um, no, I, I can't think of any. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Conditions, no. Can I say something? Yeah, you, you still can, yes. <laughs> um, we started this process to, to take care of a little girl that my sister is not going to be able to take care of by herself. So I got into this thing thinking this $80,000 adventure is worth every penny of it because we're going to we're going to we're going to raise this girl. $160,000 later. <laughs> All I'm hitting is walls. So the architect screwed up. So if there is any gray area in this at all, to just make this work. It's okay, Mr. Martin. I think we, we understand. I think we're I think we're all set. Yeah, we're good. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. We're okay, Mr. Martin. We're good. We're good. I I just make make a motion to close the public hearing. Sure. Yes, I'd like to make a motion, motion to public by... hearing. Commissioner Lino, seconded by Commissioner. No, you can't because you're, you're, not, you're not seated in this one. Second. Second by Vice Chairman DeGrade. The public hearing is closed. Um, is there a motion to approve? Oh. I make a motion to approve PH 3021, 9 Overhill Road, special use. 
permit application to use and construction within the R33 zone. Peter and Kim Martin, owner Peter Martin, applicant, map 054, lot 0033. With the, uh, with the following 26 conditions. Um, Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the, on the motion to approve? I think, I think the staff answered all our questions, Mr. D'Antoni. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, the, the point of contention here is the integration. It's not a direct entrance to the house. While that is a, a literal integration, I, I can see the concern. Um, but the regulation actually doesn't even require, unless the um, uh, Section 8 uh, doesn't even require them to remove the kitchen appliances to terminate its use as an apartment. Uh, so as far as uh, integration into the house, I don't see why it couldn't be a fully furnished attic. Um, it is separate, um, but it, it's um, right. So its use as an apartment is is the special permit, which is you know required to come back every two years. Yep. So and the integration of the house is, is is really up for interpretation, and it and it doesn't. It's not a literal. Uh, it doesn't require a literal access to the main uh, the main living space it just requires integration to the dwelling unit so I just I just like to point that out um, thank you. I think it, it allows a, a bit of uh, flexibility just in how it's phrased thank you I think I think we've all come to that conclusion I think based on your comments staffs and mm -hmm. John's and Vinny's comments just, Commissioner Limo just, just one comment to the applicants um, uh, excuse me. Yeah. Well, oh well, that's right we closed yeah, I'm sorry we closed that's right. I'm sorry hearing. So I take it it's been a motion play. I guess we need a roll call vote on this, please, Madam Secretary. Lou Fiore. Approved. Linda DeGray. Approved. Jenny Higley. Four. John Petronella. Four. Frank Limo. Four. Uh, Karam. I'm not no, saying you're. Maj Damar. <coughs> Maj Madar. Approved. There'll be a lesson on the name later. <laughs> <laughs> you keep telling me that, and I'll never, I never, I, I swear I'm going to get it. And Christian D'Antonio. Four. Let the record show that it was unanimous. Seven to nothing. It's approved. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, Good luck. Uh, Item eight, uh, new public hearings. Um, discussion on public hearings and how they pertain to special use permits. You, I do want to get something for the record first, so that's in the record. Um, on the vice of attorneys. I do want to mention before we continue about talking about special use permits in public hearings and particularly SPR 1881. I do want to mention that I did receive emails that I did not respond to. For the record, from uh, Cheryl Cody, Samantha Weber, Karen Mulrady, oh, come on, and Rebecca Jones. In addition, um, Councilman Hopkins, Councilman Despard, and Councilman Santanella also contacted me about questions about public hearings on special use permits. So I want to get that in the record. I did not respond to any of the emails, nor did I talk about that particular application in, in detail at all. So I just want to get that in the record. But we do need to have a discussion tonight whether we are going to have a public hearing on that special use permit for 1881. But I think staff would like to say something first. So no, I, I was just wondering if we could possibly move this to um, other bu business so we could get through the other applications. I, to be honest with you, I'd rather, I would rather not. We have a okay. large audience here, and I think they need to hear okay. this. And we're going to do this now. And then, you know, unfortunately, Thank I see you. my friend John here, and he's sorry, John. <laughs> so on, no offense, I, I think we need to get this done out of the way now. So I'll, I'll take comments from my commissioners. Mr. Grillo, you can certainly comment on this, but you won't be able to vote on this um, because you're not seated tonight. But, but you can certainly join us in the conversation. I think, we'll, I think we're just going to go. Do you want to start first, Lori? Yeah. Um, 
I think anybody can speak on, I, I mean, the, this is a conversation, so I think you, even if somebody's not seated as a regular member, they could certainly have the discussion. Oh, absolutely. I they said he could. They just can't take action I, on anything. I said he could, yes. Yeah, okay. So just for clarification. So um, d just I just wanted to reiterate to the commission and to the community um, that zoning is permitted by enabling statutes, and we must follow those statutes. And if we don't, there could be lawsuits. So that you just have to remember that that is our guiding force for anything that we do here. The regulations are created based on those statutes and also guided by case law. And this is um, part of our purview is that the commission must follow those statutes. For instance, and for the Zoning Commission, it's Connecticut General Statutes Title 8, Chapter 124, Sections 8-1 through 8-13. And if you want, I'll give that to you again, or you can watch it on ETV. So um, just the difference between a site plan and a special permit. A site plan is administrative review. It is permitted by right by statute. If it meets all the requirements of the regulations, it must be approved. And that is by statute and case law. The commission may not deny an application if it meets the requirements. It does not require a public hearing and the public are not allowed to speak on it. It's, it will also be granted automatic approval if the review and action are not taken within the statutory time frames. Um, and that's under CG, Connecticut General Statute Section 8-7D. Um, denial or modification requires reasons for the record um, and action must be taken within 65 days of receipt. So this is another thing that we always have to follow is time frames. When did it get received? How fast can we hear it? So a special permit is more of an administrative, is also an administrative review. It's typically required on the proposed use might be suitable for many sites, but not others. This requires a public hearing with a legal notice published in the paper. The public are allowed to, to speak on the application. Such uses may be permitted and approved if it is deemed to be the right fit for the general area or neighborhood. Reasons for the decision must be stated for the record, and the hearings must open within the statutory time frames, close within open to close, and action taken within all the statutory time frames. Now, the, the, I know that many people are here probably for a specific application. The thing is, is what the regulations say is what we have to follow. If it's not in the regulations to require a public hearing, we don't have to have a, a public hearing. We do have a section that allows it. However, it doesn't make it a special exception, and we still have to treat the application as a site plan. We can't add conditions to it based on whatever is seems to be missing in certain purviews. So I just kind of wanted to put that out there and just remember that we are bound by the statutes and how we act on an application. Okay? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Lori. Thank Chairman. you for that detail. I hope everyone kind of heard that loud and clear is that if we decided to have a public hearing on that particular application, it's a site plan review of the building, of the parking lot, um, where the windows are in the building, maybe some of the plantings. It's not about whether they're able to build that building or not. You have to really clearly understand that. It took me a little while to really grasp all that, to be quite frank with you. Um, so I like to go along, even though, I'm actually, I'm going to save my comments to last. So I just want to go, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go right down the line instead of, Mr. Commissioner D'Antonio, do you have a, an opinion on whether we should have a public hearing on SPR 1881 or not? And, and that particularly is the Wynn Stanley pro project at 35 Bacon Road. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this is a tough one because I, I don't want to give anybody false hope, um, which coming up here and, and presenting in front of the commission uh, can influence the commission uh, on, a, on a normal basis uh, for public hearings. But in the case of uh, the site plan review, it, it really can't act as anything but uh, a, a, a pretty much just a, a relief valve for public, uh, you know, public opinion on this plan. 
Um, I, I, I don't think it uh, really can add any value. Um, I'd, I'd love to hear what the public has to say about, uh, about it. Uh, we've seen from the emails you've put into record. Uh, there's a lot of interest in this project, but uh, you know, from a from a technical perspective, I, I don't think it can uh, it, it can you know add any value uh, to to the commission's decision to approve the site plan. Uh, so so I, I, I would say uh, I, I don't think there's value in adding a public hearing. Commissioner Petronella. Uh, I, I somewhat echo uh, with uh, your mic, the, the, John. Your mic. I, I echo what the commissioner uh, D'Antonio says. Uh, it. it uh, we are bound uh, uh, by by state statute. Uh, Laurie, thank you for the for the clarification on that. But uh, we some of us have been through this before, uh, and, and and had the, and, and, and had a public hearing and so forth, uh, which I got a sense from that experience. It did create some false hope um, from the public, and and uh, but uh, understanding that yes, we are bound by the site plan review. Uh, section of, this, of the uh, 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 of the zoning that what we had to uh, uh, approve to. So um, you know, I, I, I'm on a fence with it. Uh, I, I guess I don't really care one way or the other. I know what we need to do as, as a commission uh, uh, and so forth. So uh, you know, again, it's just you know, e either way, I'm, I'm okay with it. Vice Chairman Higley. I'm going to go in the other direction. Um, I, while there's not much inputs can be swayed on the actual requirements of the application, I think it would be nice if we could hear if the public wanted the certain types of plantings or if they wanted a fence in a certain area or if they wanted parking a certain way or truck traffic uh, going in a certain direction. Those are things we can look at. We can't look at the quality of life, um, uh, birds in the area, deer in the area, but I think that they have some valid, perhaps valid input on the application, and I don't have a problem with listening to them. Thank you. Vice Chairman DeGray. Um, I'm going to go with Christian and John with half of his answer. No, I don't think a public hearing would be helpful. Um, again, it gave false hope to some of the uh, other people that were involved in a previous case. It held up uh, a landowner from doing what they wanted to do, costing money to both sides. Um, I, I think I've watched the inland and wetlands. I've heard discussions there on their public hearing. Um, so I think I have a, a good sense. Um, yes, you know, it is a change and we all have to face change at some time, but I don't think a public hearing would be uh, a good idea. Thank you, Commissioner Lima. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Thank you, Lori, for the explanation. Um, I don't think we should ever stop the public from speaking. And um, so I was here sitting on the board for the sister, I'll call it the sister project on North Maple Street. And yes, um, I don't want to see any of you people have false hope, but I don't mind hearing your comments. But you do have to understand and think about what the planner, what Laurie had said about the state statutes that we're, we're bound by as a commission. But um, I, I'm open to hearing uh, the public speak and see what your thoughts are. Um, I know it was very emotional for the, uh, the last application, and I think that going into the public hearing, the residents were thinking of something different could have been an outcome. So just with that in mind, um, I'd love to hear, you know, what you have to say. Me as well. I did receive, Mr. Chairman, several emails, and I didn't respond because of the legality of discussing um, open uh, applications. And I apologize to anybody who sent me one. 
and didn't hear back from me. And it was only because um, that's uh, you know, the statutes and the rules that we have to follow. But I did save them and you know, I have them. And if they need to be turned in at any point, I'd be more than happy to turn them over to the chair. But um, I'm OK if they'd like to speak, Mr. Chairman. Thank um, you, Commissioner Lamb. Commissioner Grill. Thank you. Um, OK, so I was also at one of the meetings that we had the public hearing. Uh, my opinion, we're hearing it up here. You're actually hearing the commissioner say that they want to hear, but it's not going to make a difference. You're hearing them say this. Um, so I don't know if you people want to take the time to come here to speak your mind and then walk out knowing that you just you bought yourself a couple hours to say something that it's not going to change um, what's on the table in my eyes. Uh, I'll go either way. I don't mind listening. Uh, I don't want to be the bad guy, but like you just heard it, um, I don't think it's going to help uh, just because of the circumstances, and I apologize for that. Well, thank you. I guess it's my turn. First of all, I want to... Oh, Karan, I'm sorry, Karan. Yes, please, Karan. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> go ahead, Karan. Well, no, thank you very much. And uh, yes, I think I do believe that the zoning regulations apply, planning regulations apply to this special, special use, use permit. permit. And, and if, if the, the application, application, application meets, meets all, all those conditions, conditions there should be no further issues. The application itself has gone through various technical reviews by many, many experts within and without the town uh, agency. There are wetland experts, there are planning experts, there are traffic experts, there are engineering experts. So, and of course, in addition to all that was the Inland Wetland Commission. So public has had uh, enough chance to express their opinion and see where the applicant may need a little more help to make it more in compliance with the neighborhood. Because compliance with the neighborhood is a broad subject. So at this point, I think uh, I'm not in favor of having public hearing and putting the entire neighborhood in more uh, questionable mood, so to say. Thank you. Well, now it's my turn, and I'm sure as people realize, I've worn many different hats in my uh, over 40 years of involvement here in this community. And I do believe that um, even though nothing really of any substance can change the site plan review public hearing, as people have already said before, basically, it's not about quality of life issues. It can't be about the pond or the eagles or anything of that nature. It specifically has to be for some of the things that Commissioner Higley already mentioned. I do firmly believe that the public should have a say as long as it pertains to a site plan review. And if the, we have a vote here and we agree to have a, a public hearing as part of that site plan review, I want everyone to understand as chairman, I will hold people to that. There will be no quality of life issues discussed in that public hearing. It will be about the site plan in that building and the things that pertain to this application with this planning zoning board. And I do believe that we need to do this as a community. We have to do this, have to have this public hearing, no matter how nothing might change or how might painful might be for us. The commissioner is up here. It needs to be done. We would not be representing the community if we didn't have that. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the secretary to do a roll call vote on this. Is there a motion made, please, to... Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, I just wanted to offer one other opportunity for you is you could always hold the site plan approval and later decide whether or not a public hearing should be necessary. I thank you, but I, okay. I understand, Lord, but I, I do I, believe... I just wanted to bring thank you, I understand the option, I, but I do believe we need to have the public hearing just like we would for a special use permit and the site plan review just like we would anything else. You know, Mr. Chair, I appreciate I'm, the option. I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand what Laurie said. Can I you think explain Lord, that, Laurie? Go ahead, Laurie. I'm sorry. You, you could hear the site plan approval and at a later time decide that you should have a, a public hearing. 
So, so you don't have to decide saying, tonight. You could hear the application and then say, you know, maybe we should have it a public hearing or so, maybe not. So when you're not saying approve it and then have a public hearing, you're saying hear it. Hear, hear it. it. Not, have, yeah. not approve it. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. Yeah. My, myself personally, as chairman, this is just my personal opinion, is that, I, and I appreciate the, the option, but I think I, I personally want to hear some of the comments because they might have some comments that are going to pertain to the building and the parking, mm -hmm. things of that nature, and not the quality of life issues. And I'd rather do that before we have the site plan review. I, I just think we have to keep in mind that the timing that Laurie was talking about. Yes, right. Yeah. We have 65-day clock started when the application was first sent in to us, is what, two weeks ago, roughly? So we... The 13th. 13th. So we have till... Let's see, February 13th, March 30th, you know, almost the end of March. I mean, not, not quite the end, about what, okay. March 18th or so. So we move on this, and, you know, yep. as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, uh, Petr uh, Petronella, uh, yeah, Petronella, and Tom. In, in, in regards to uh, th that question by, uh, uh, well, with Lori and, and Commissioner Limo, timing, uh, I think, is important. But uh, if, if we vote on this tonight to have a public hearing, mm -hmm. uh, it, it has to be advertised, Lori? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, and if we wait until the application is heard with the site plan review in two weeks, let's say, and we vote that, then we'd have to go through the advertisement process and have the public hearing two weeks after that? No, or? no we, we could, um, if, if that's the commission's decision, um, it's scheduled to be heard at the next meeting since it's Thursday, now we could um, get the legal notices out tomorrow and still meet the time frame, the statutory time frame for them. And the no, signs no, the, required? No, the, no, the, qu the, question, the question is, Lori, if we wait to hold the vote until two weeks at, at the site plan review and say, we think we need a public hearing, then we gotta wait another two weeks because we gotta advertise, oh, right? I'm, I'm so sorry, that pushes it out yes. right. even further. That, right. that so, is correct. Right. So timing wise, if we do this tonight, it'll, yes. Uh, yes. okay. And that's what I'm advocating as chairman, if I can. Okay. I have yep. the privilege of the chair just no. to make my opinion. Sure. And, and Mr. Chair, another thing, uh, relative well, to the well, advertisement. Well, wait, Chris, oh, sorry. Commissioner D'Antoni, what's up? Yep. Sorry. So, uh, Commissioner Higley, you made a, uh, an interesting point about the public providing their comment. Um, and, I, I, you know, the, the dilemma here is with uh, whether it can influence our decision, which it cannot. And um, so, but we can't we can't add conditions to the approval as a site plan review. No, a site plan review is actually looking yeah. at the building, the yeah. property, mm -hmm. and you can have conditions. input right. on landscaping. Oh, on okay. you can. Okay. Right. Okay. Because uh, that, that's a, that's a good point, and and I'm thinking too. Um, you know, on on the the aesthetics of landscaping and all, um, whether or not we add conditions to that point, could it still and, and maybe there's just a point of discussion. Could it still add uh, value to the applicant who will be here at the site plan review yeah. to hear uh, the voice of their neighbors, their soon to be neighbors, um, which may provide value, again, not necessarily towards our decision, but towards their affinity with the, the local community. You can buffer areas with plantings. Mm -hmm. right. and we haven't seen the plans yet, but perhaps the plans don't put enough plantings in certain areas to buffer the noise. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps uh, they can buffer the actual um, view. Um, that's another thing with fences. fences. Some fences do make good neighbors. Yep. You know, maybe they want a fence. And if they want a fence, they can ask for it during the, public, during the site plan review public hearing. But they can't ask for it otherwise. Yep. So yeah. it's just I'd like to hear what they say, and I'm glad that the chairman is going to hold them um, to just issues that pertain to the site plan review yeah. so that they can have good input and we can hear valid points. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just I, I forgot to mention one thing. I, I also thank you before. I, uh, I don't think I mentioned this before, Commissioner Alamos. I, I also want to thank the people for sending the emails and please no disrespect. I did not respond back or if you've called and I didn't pick up because we're just we're not allowed to converse in that form or another. So it was not any disrespect to anyone. We're just not allowed to converse. And, went, and really, you shouldn't be doing that to us commission members because we can't interact with you. So um, are we done with discussion? No, I just said, yeah. Um, just uh, two things. Um, on the timing for the legal process, um, so we'll be able to have the legal notices in the newspaper and the postings on the property that are required in time for the next meeting. 
And then I just want to uh, just t go back on some of the discussion I just heard about landscaping and, and those types of things. I think we got to be careful um, because I don't know if that comes under our purview. I think most of that comes under wetlands. Um, yeah. Let's just make sure before we, again, I don't, because going through the last one, I don't want to give anybody any false hope out yep. there. Let's make sure that, you know, we, you're saying we can. Let's be sure that we can. Because um, I don't know if that comes under us. or So let, let's have maybe staff um, chime in on that a little bit. For the site plan review, if the application meets the requirements of the standards of something like a land, the landscaping section, then it's that's what it is. It's If it meets the section, it's approved. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to start having the false hope again because I see with them people. I lived in the neighborhood. I lived there. I lived there too. Yeah. And I see what they went through. I've got to know many of them. And I just don't want to see that happen again. So, Ben, if I understood you correctly, they can't have any input on the landscaping you're saying? If the applicant hears them and wants to modify the landscaping, he can't do that? If the applicant wants to modify their landscaping? As long as it's still in compliance with the with the standards of the landscaping section of the regulations for a site plan review, then they can. As long as the applicant wants to do it. If if the if what they're meets the criteria. If it meets the criteria, that's what they have to do. That's all they have to fulfill for an approval. If right. it meets the criteria of the landscaping standards. Right. Right. But it can be modified if it still meets the criteria, and the applicant wants to do it. Right. right. The keyword is the applicant. Yes. It can exceed the criteria yes. if the applicant would like to do it. Thank you. Again. Does everyone clearly understand what, what we're saying here? I'm looking at my commissioners, but I'm looking this right. way, too. Yes. Yeah. Everybody understand what I just said. It's up to the applicant could exceed the requirements if they so desire. And I think the applicant would do it. Yeah. So are we all set? We... Oh, Karan, I'm sorry. Yep, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I have only one comment that if a topic or subject such as landscaping is already meeting the requirements of the regulations. The commission cannot impose additional requirement in a site plan review process. That's my understanding. The staff may say something. Yes, we, yes, absolutely, Karan. I think everyone understands that. Yes, absolutely. But thank you for that comment. Thank you. There's a motion to make a roll call vote, please, on this. I make a motion to have the roll call on this subject. Is there a second, please? Second. Thank you. Uh, Secretary, please call the roll. Lou Fiore? Yes. Linda DeGray? No. Jenny Higley? <laughs> Four. John Petronella? Four. Frank Alimo? Four. Karam Maj Madar. Yay. Just the way it's spelled, just the way it's spelled. <laughs> okay, yes or no? Four. Okay. Christian D. Antonio. Four. And Vinny Grillo. You can't vote. Oh. Yeah. yeah. All right, never mind. Sorry, Ben. Uh, six to one, that we will be holding a site plan, a public hearing with this site plan review, um, either on the next meeting or meeting after we up the staff whenever it comes back on our agenda. Okay, everyone? Oh, yeah. And you know, well, you remember when I was deputy mayor. You know me. You have to do that. Okay. New, I think now we're on to new business. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to do, we have to let the. Did you want to make a motion to take a recess, Chairman? I move we take oh. a five-minute recess. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Five minutes so people Aye. get a chance to leave the room.
doing business. XSP 2201 133 Brandon Rose. Site plan review for construction of a new softball field, town of Enfield, owner applicant. Map 58, lot 88, R33 zone. Find up applicants and identify yourself. I didn't have my mic on. Yes, good evening. I'm John Cabibbo, assistant town engineer representing the town here. Uh, we have uh, JP Rodriguez, he's the lead engineer on this project, and Mike Moonen from uh, BL Companies uh, worked on the design for the, uh, the uh, new softball field proposed here at Brainerd Park. Um, I assume everyone's looked at the plans. We're looking at putting this uh, softball field between the two existing parking lots. Uh, the only comments that we received from staff that I saw were from uh, Earl Provencher, Fire, uh, North Thompsonville Fire District, and I spoke with him twice since he submitted those. Um, all of his comments were actually going to have uh, taken care of through public works, like signing the field. He had asked about signing the fields, numbering them, um, and, and also signing them for emergency purposes and access. He also had questions about the access uh, roads that are uh, existing in the park and in addition to the ones on the new softball field. And um, we're actually going to meet out there with him and EMS to take a look at it uh, in better weather so we can get a better idea. Um, so we will be uh, addressing those, those comments specifically. Um, but most of those will be done outside of this is a contract work this is uh, proposed to be put out as a contract uh, for the new field itself um, so it's pretty straightforward uh, the field will be lighted uh, uh, there will be obviously there'll be some uh, tree removal but there will be a number of trees still between here and uh, and Brainer Road um, we, we tried to tuck this, tuck this softball field in, mm -hmm. and and then also uh, make the access, uh, the, the uh, ADA access from both parking lots uh, to the field. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, you know. I mean, um, not not too much more to add. Uh, Michael Moonen, of the <coughs> companies. Uh, we did also try to keep a, a vegetated buffer of the existing trees between the new field and the uh, existing field, um, you know, both to kind of prevent foul balls from going, in, uh, not home run balls going into that uh, field. Mm -hmm. um, and then also just to provide a, a visual uh, buffer and, and maintain some of that vegetation. And the other thing is the, um, you know, the lighting system will be the, um, the newest version of the Musco lighting system with the um, LED cutoff light fixtures. Yep. Um, not much light will even leave the premises of the field area, much less spill into um, any any abutting properties. So, um, and they also are, are very, the newer systems are very downlit, similar to uh, downlit street lights, so they don't give that um, horizontal glare that the older systems uh, gave. So, we're also going to be adding yep. some uh, dry wells to take care of the uh, the storm water. Mm -hmm. I'll put up, I think it's uh, three three or four dry wells on the right side, yeah. and one bigger dry well on the left side, and that should take care of all the storm water. So, well, if you, if, if I may have the privilege of chair, I'm going to start because I'm looking at my. My friend John, because he knows how far back I go with these plans. And um, 22, 20 years later, after that referendum, we put it together. I, I, and I know the, the land very well, having been involved with softball in my younger years for many, many years. So um, the only question I had, and I know exactly where the ball field's going, pretty similar to the original layout we did on the referendum back in 2002 or three. Um, the only question I had when I was looking through the plans was knowing the area as well as I do, I noticed that there actually was no additional parking being recommended. And it was just actually going to lose some what I would call regular parking spaces for ADA spaces. Did you guys do any configuration into that? Because sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I can just imagine three, if there's a tournament going on and all three ball fields are being used at the same time, my only concern about that plan is, is there enough parking in that location? So, I mean, did you guys take that in consideration? 
Um, but did you look at additional parking? Sometimes all it takes is just six or eight more spaces. And I'm concerned that people that start parking all over the place only when there's a tournament or if all three fields are being used at the same time. We didn't, uh, yeah, we didn't look too much at, at adding parking over there. Um, we were trying, we were kind of asked to fit in yeah. what we could. Yeah. And the, and the ADA spaces are required to be yeah. near the access yeah. points. Yeah. Um, so yeah, honestly, no, we, we didn't, we didn't look at increasing the parking okay. um, under this design. And I like the idea that you're using the new, what I would call downscope lights, because one of my other concerns is that that feels probably a little bit more closer to Brainerd Road than the other ones. So you didn't want to have that ricochet effect off into the homes across the street from Brainerd Park. So I think that's a really good idea. So thank you. And those are the only comments I had. Uh, Commissioner DeGray? Yeah, just one, because I saw that you're taking out a basketball court. In, you're not no. okay because I thought no. I read that. No, we are not removing a basketball. Okay, because I was kind of concerned because I see kids using those basketball courts, you know, no. and it's good for the neighborhood. That's all. All right, that was my only concern. Thanks, Commissioner Grillo. Thank you. Yeah. Did, did you see um, just to check if you had sufficient parking to begin with? Is that why you didn't look further into expanding it? I mean, is it sufficient for for the baseball fields? I'm pretty good with houses and stuff, but on baseball fields and stuff, I don't know what is required. Is there something required, Lori? Amount of, I mean, I never heard, but I'm. I figured I'd bring it up. Well, if you had. It's 10, 20, you're going to have... Because he's, to he's right. If there's three baseball fields and you have a tournament, players, yeah. it's, it's a lot of cars. Sure. But I, I do know there's a lot of parking there now. I yeah. just don't know if you took that... Um, yeah, we did. If like that was said, sufficient enough for them, because what's the sense of three beautiful baseball fields and you can't park there? Right. What's going to happen is they're going to park outside on Brandon Road, yeah. and that's definitely a no-no. Yeah, but that's what's going to happen. Because if, if I may, you, you have, I'm just averaging, you're going to have 13 players a team, could be more, could be a little less, but let's just throw 13, two teams yep. playing, that's 26 a team times three. Maybe you got some people doubling up with cars, but you got to assume you're not, and then you're going to have grandma and grandpa or, or the next door neighbor or the brother and the sister-in-law coming to watch the game. So, I mean... That, that was really my only concern. Okay. It's not so even Brainerd Road, but just they're, they're starting to kind of park in what I would call the preserved areas of Brainerd Park where there shouldn't be parking, you know, pulling up. Well, we'll take a look at that. We'll see what we can uh, yeah. figure out for standards on these, you know, on these type of things. Um, you know, parking standards for, for ball fields and, mm -hmm. you know, when there are, like you said, there's multiple fields there. So, uh, like you're saying, if there's games going on at all three of them, you know that that's we want to be able to take everybody on. Yeah. You know, yeah. For parking. So we will we'll take a look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, Commissioner Lima? Hey, Jim. How you doing? Sir, how um, are you doing this? I'm sorry. I'm looking at the fire department's comments here, and I know you just touched on it briefly. So it is part of this uh, application, and it's uh, under the under. Uh, department comments um, so you said you were gonna take a look at this later or you're gonna go back out there but this is part of the application and part of the record since the chief commented on this and it looks like there was supposed to be something done in the past um, with some uh, concrete or cement blocks there that, that are still yeah, there the cement blocks are on the east end and DPW said that they will be moving those. That's not, you know. Right, but I mean, seeing that uh, his comments are here, part of this application, I think that uh, we should pay a little more attention to them and see if they can be implemented into this approval. Um, it seems like there has been some problems out there in the past <clears throat> with access, not only for the fire department, but it looks like for ambulances as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would say emergency access overall. So um, I think it's something that we should uh, look at here and uh, make sure that these things are addressed because, you know, like you're hearing, um, an, in these, uh, an increased amount of people make an increased amount of incidences. And, you know, we have to make sure that these folks can get in and out of there um, clearly and, uh, you know, for public safety and everybody playing and, and the spectators. So I would like us to, to address um, 
Chief Pavancher's uh, statements here and uh, be sure that we have these uh, these uh, put in place uh, for, for emergency use here. Um, make sure that, you know, the, back, uh, the PD didn't... Uh, the PD didn't comment, but um, I'm sure they would uh, be happy with access as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. No problem, Mr. Chairman. You know, uh, one second, Crown. I just have one question. I'll get to you in a second. You know, is there a time limit? Because I noticed that we, we have lost the Higgins field now, so now I would imagine there's a shortage of softball fields, particularly probably for the girls' softball league and women's softball league. So is there a... Is there, a, is there a drastic timeline where we're really short on fields here? And this this wouldn't be ready for the next softball season, yeah, anyways. Yeah, yes. Right, we're that's looking a year. You're gonna you're gonna you would you would work on this this summer and let it sit for a year, and they wouldn't be using this at the at the min, maximum till a year from now. Well, no, no, there, no, 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 Commissioner, we are we are sodding the field, so we are anticipating it being ready for play in the, in the fall. In the fall, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. We'd okay. want a two to three month growing period. For okay, so you're looking at, at September, you know, yeah. Labor Day. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So you wanted to get it online sometime this year. Yes. And that's the part has to do with the fact that we lost the we lost the field. I would I would imagine. Correct. Okay. okay. And now, uh, excuse me, Kamal, uh, Karan was at first. Karan, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. I think my comment on this subject of parking is. Yes, if you do need some by whatever regulations or uh, logical requirements, uh, make them as unobtrusive as possible, such as uh, gravel, grass, that type of thing, rather than blacktop, bituminous. That's number one. Number two, I would like to hear the staff comments first before the commissioners start asking questions and uh, uh, be a good idea to listen to the staff before the commission start asking. Thank you. Yeah, I was just going to say the parking um, the parking standards do not address this kind of use. So this would fall under um, determination of required parking by by the commission yeah. under uh, ten ten three parking space. Parking space requirements for a use not mentioned or variations of above uses shall be determined by the commission. How competent is the commission to determine that kind of requirement? Well, I feel, I, you know, I don't feel competent, but I feel like I have some knowledge in the area, haven't spent a lot of time there. Yeah. <laughs> we would typically ask the applicant or, you know, if, yeah. if I'm not sure what the town has used in the past, well, if, if you have any of those, that, those numbers. I yeah, can, Go ahead. I can interject. Um, for for park design, generally we use uh, fifty to seventy parking spaces per field, and that's like at a maximum level. Yeah. Like yeah. you mentioned, there are yeah. twenty six. Yeah, and then you allow some for turnover. Yeah. So sometimes when we design a park, we'll do an average of fifty per field, and that's one hundred and fifty parking spaces for these three fields. Yeah. You add a few for the parking lot. I mean, for the basketball courts, that's very minimal. Yeah. Recreational use. Um, and it just when we when we took a first look at this, we didn't think parking was going to be an issue. We didn't we didn't actually even co count the parking spaces. But um, I, in my opinion, I think there are more than 150 spaces okay. between these two lots. And um, I'd like to mention that there is a large grass area. I know this is a little rough, but there's a large grass area just um, to the south of the ball field between the vegetated area and um, the, the playground. Yeah. That grass area could be used for overflow parking in a, in a pinch, in a tournament situation. Um, and, um, but my opinion, just as a park professional, if you will, um, the uh, every week use of the facility of all three fields, it, does not seem like it would exceed the parking that's there. Um, and then again, there's that grass area that's available um, that the, you know, the town or the leagues could manage for for overflow parking. Um, are you saying? Mm -hmm. uh, are you yeah. are you saying um, that grass area that will be in left field? No, 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 no. Outside there's the, the left field area, wall. This is a... That's what I'm looking at in front of me here. I don't have, a, like, an overall site. I, I have exactly what you're showing. Oh, you do? Okay, yeah. there's a grass area to the south of the field. 
Okay. Uh, to the, what should I say? To the, where, the, the, right. where, the, where, the, where the playground is. Right, there. right. right there. Yep. So there's a park a lot. And then, there's so there's an existing parking lot between by the basketball courts and the field, right? Yes. So you're saying that grass area right there is what yeah, you're talking adjacent about. adjacent to the parking lot. Right. Yep. Which would be left field, I think. I don't know. But anyway, never no, mind left field, but I see what you're saying. It's <laughs> south of, yep. oh. Right okay, field. south of right. Field. Right, right. So what's right that? Field. What's that open space used for now? It's just an open grass just a, play area. But does uh, it's not? I don't think. Does it's the open. town have any plans for that, or is it? It looks like it's pay. It looks like it's maintained. Well, there is a there is a playground there. I, just, I guess just for the kids running around. How oh, does play equipment on it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, yeah okay. It's a playground. There's equipment there. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah. There's a playground there. there. Yeah, and it's that that's on the far side from the from the we'll field. Want to get a count on those parking lots yeah. to get a better idea. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. So yeah, no, there's a little bit of a playground there in the far yeah, corner. So that, yeah, I know, yeah. I know, I know, yeah, I know it well. Right. There is a little bit. Of, I, I, actually, to be quite honest, I'm a little. I'm just my opinion. I'm a little um, a little concerned about using that grass area as a runoff. I, I, we we'll get we got to get a count on those if, those lots. I think they need to get a count. Maybe you know sufficient to what Mike is saying. To total up the two parking lots. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah, um, because they would, people would park on either one, you know, if they were coming to to the three fields. Is there a concern about timeline if we table this to the next meeting for your timeline to be able to start your construction and keep going? We need to we need to get this thing started as soon as we can. Oh, yes. But you're not really going to start now in January or February. You wouldn't well, start till we March. Gotta, we got to go through the uh, yeah. bid process. Bid process. Bid process. Oh, yeah. It takes, and there. Uh, yeah. it takes a while. Then the yeah, yeah. the contract. Right. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got a whole other month there. Um, I, you know, not having the experience, I mean, is there a way that I don't think anyone here jacks, but there's a concern about the parking and the emergency access? And emergency access, so I'm, I guess I'm looking at staff, if I may. I know you guys are looking at maps. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking at the GIS. And, 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 I, mean, I, mean, I don't think, I, I'm just not, gauging without a vote here. You're not changing any of the parking that's already out there? No, no I mean, we're changing I mean, a couple of... It looks like there's a lot of parking. I was kind of it does. trying to do, there's a lot. Yeah. We're only doing the changes with the yeah. accessible parking spaces yeah. near yeah. those access points. There's a lot of area here, right? Okay. Yeah. We can pass with conditions. Yeah. The really there, there's yeah. got to be over 200 spaces here. We'll get the three conditions. The, yeah. uh, it's a question of if it's... Mr. Chair, I'm going to ask them a question? Yeah, no. What, so what's, what's yeah. going on with the trees between the two ball fields now, right to the outside of the backstop. I'm calling. I'm looking at it as a baseball field. So what's going to be the new backstop? There's trees back there. The trees between the two fields. What's going on there? Those staying? Yeah, that might hit that. He said we're yeah. trying to keep as many trees between those fields as we can. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and just, I mean, you may have oh. to... Uh, Are you all set? I, I don't know if you can incorporate your... Okay. A, a emergency road through that area of those trees. I'm not sure if that, that's going to. No, that that's already there. That's they're, already there. They're talking about redoing that section. If you look underneath, uh, there is already that dirt road is there. Right. Okay. This this is just we're redoing it's a that, sunken dirt that road. section. Okay. So that that shouldn't. No, I just that shouldn't affect tree removal. All right. So you're leaving that. that all those trees are between the two fields are remaining. Yes. Okay. Chris, hold on, please. Hit. Staff. Yeah, just quick counting. Uh, there's an approximately 180 parking spaces oh, on the okay. on the on the uh, proposed plan. So, so if okay. if it was 50 per field, 150. Yeah. So and then yeah. some for basketball. So yeah. it's like I think we're offset with the parking. He's, he's there's 180, and that includes the ADA because you're just going to take some that are already there and make them ADA. So I think we're offset with the parking. Just we could just add it in there if additional. A parking is needed. It'd be no, that as a condition. That, I mean, sure. That's all. Sure, sure. They don't have to do it. <clears throat> sure. 
Thank you. Thank you, staff, for uh, coming to park this bus on the map. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you did it too? All right. Appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> Thank you very much for counting, Ben and Lori. Thank you. Thank you. Did Chris, you have something? I, I, it was just a clarification, which I, I think you just answered. So the, the vegetation coming, so there's no new planting. You're just clearing space for the field and then pretty much leaving uh, all the other vegetation around it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Do you want to make a motion to approve? Someone, please. I make a motion to approve X, XSP 22-01. 133 Brainerd Road, site plan review for construction of new uh, softball field, town of Enfield, owner, applicant, map 58, lot 88, approval of the site plan application to be in accordance with the submitted plan with 29 uh, conditions, three of them being site-specific site condition, um, proper signage of the fields, uh, any additional parking needed to be millings, not uh, imper impervious surface, mm -hmm. and um, addressing the emergency access. Yes. You okay with those? Yes. All right. Is there a second to, to accept that as amended second. with the? Second with the amendment. Oh. Seconded by Commissioner Higley with the three uh, additional conditions. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Seeing that, roll call vote, please, Madam Secretary. Lou Fieri. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Jenny Higley. Four. John Petronella. Four. Frank Alimo. Four. Uh, Karam Mudjumar. Mudjumar. Come on, that was good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Christian D D Antonio. Four. What's that, guys? Thank you very much. Right, good seeing you. Appreciate your time and your comments. <laughs> There you go. Okay, now we're on to old business. SPR 1880, 243 Shaker Road, site plan review for additional concrete pads and silos. Yankee Casting Company owner Kevin Vecarelli, applicant map 95 lot 6, I2 zone. Oh, yes, Karan. He needs to excuse himself. I need to excuse myself. Okay, Commissioner Momjar, thank you. Commissioner Grill, you were uh, activated for this particular hearing. Thank you. Hi. Hi, can you please uh, identify yourself and your address, name and address, please? Sure, good evening. Uh, for the record, uh, Dana Steele, I'm a professional engineer with J.R. Russo and Associates, and I'm here this evening uh, representing Yankee Casting um, uh, off of uh, Shaker Road. Uh, Kevin Vecherelli, the president of Yankee Casting, is here with me. Um, they are proposing uh, improvements to their operation. They're a, they're a, um, a, 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 a sand foundry machine shop, not sand not. foundry. So they, that, yeah, they, they, they make parts uh, using sand to form uh, those, those parts. And so they're improving their operations and most of the activity is inside the building that they're doing. But the only thing that affects the outside of the building is in the back of the building as you can see on the site plan i've highlighted in yellow there's five concrete pads that have to be added to the back behind the building and they're gonna they're, they'll, they'll place on those pads mechanical units to to assist uh, uh, associated with the operations inside the building uh, so there are no activities outside the building just just uh support for the operations inside the building one of those pads the one furthest to the left to the south is uh gonna uh, hold two silos and um, I understand this came up at your last meeting. There was no one here to answer qu specific questions you had about the silos. And so uh, we submitted uh, um, some information, I think after your packets went out, we did submit that to staff. Ben uh, received that, that email with that dimensions. I think he felt that that was what you what were looking for. But uh, certainly if you need any more detail, I did bring a, a photo of it. Thought maybe that would, uh, that, that would help. And I can uh, I can hand that out, but um, that's that's really it. Um, this pretty pretty simple applic uh, application, um, really not much change impacts on it. changing not changing the use, not changing the, the really the flow of traffic or anything 
of, of significance to the site and you're really not going to see these uh these changes because they're in the back of the building other than um uh, the, the, the silo which does have some height who should i give this to i'm going to start over here <laughs> to the commission yeah, this uh, Mr. Chairman, I just, uh, Karan, could you turn your video off, please? Sorry. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. Right. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I just keep it brief. That's really, well, we, it's just some mechanical pads in the back. But if you, if you do have more questions, uh, we'll, we'll, we're here to answer them. Is there any Commissioner DeGray? Just one. You're put these pads are already there, right? So you're just putting no, these no. They're not? No, we're, okay. we're, we're there there's they're in <coughs> landscaped areas right now and uh gravel areas and, and we'll be installing the pads so we can okay. put the units on a stable. For some day. reason I thought they were already there. <laughs> Thank you. No. Commissioner Higley? <coughs> All that's in the silos is sand. Sand, correct. Yeah. Nothing else. Correct. Do they need any maintenance or cleaning or anything? No. Okay. No. External. We'll probably okay. paint them once every 15 years or something, just like normal. But. Thank you. Mm -hmm. but is that the actual size? Yeah. Uh, no, that's a similar two. So that's the same company that we're ordering the sand silos for, but uh, ours are going to be on the dimensions I gave you. I think they're 12 foot three by sure. okay. 23 feet high. They hold okay. about 70 tons each. Yeah, that one looks like it's a little that bigger. That one is that. a little bit yeah. bigger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's the size. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and I see it. Thank you. I tried you. to get a cut drawing for you, but that's the okay. we were ordering from yeah. them, they were like, what's that? So, and, and I see in one, one of the documentations we have here, just for the record, is basically you're saying this equipment will recycle the sand, which will actually help you reduce your sand waste? Correct. And then, Correct. Just for my, what's, what's sand waste? Well, we, make, we, pour, we melt metal and pour it into a shape. And what we have is a sand mold that, uh, like we play in the sand to make sand castles. So we pour molten metal into a void in like a sand mold, and then we break that sand away and we're left with that metal piece. Yeah. So right now we have to throw the sand away. So this equipment that we're buying that goes in the inside, actually will take, crush it back down so we can reuse it, reuse it. and stop throwing it away. It's because the sand has like trace metal? Yeah, we have to put like a 1% plastic in it to hold it together. Like yeah. it's a very low concrete mixture oh, really. So it's got that extra binder in it that we need to break back down so we can reapply it to reuse it. So this part of the silo is just going to hold in different stages until it's fully processed and we reuse it. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Right. Is there any other questions? Staff, would you have anything you would like to add to this at all? Did you see anything in the application or any kind of conditions that um, I'm looking through here to pick up anything that you might have hinted towards that I didn't pick up? Is there anything you want to mention at all? Uh, no, I just wanted the uh, just the clarification of the silos added in and the applicant supplied that information. Okay. There's no more questions. Everybody, I'll take entertain a motion to approve. Right. Motion made by Commissioner Alimo to approve. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Diantano, second. Sorry. Okay. So I guess we'll have a roll call vote at this. Any any discussion on that? Okay. Lou Fieri. Four. Linda DeGray, four. Jenny Higley, four. John Petronella, four. Frank Alimo, four. Vinny Grillo, four. Uh, Christian D'Antonio, four. Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. So you're all set. You. I wouldn't, since we, I would entertain a motion from someone that we, in other business, which is next, that we move item C to item. Um, before A, so that we can take these gentlemen and then we can go off and do our internal business after that. And make a motion so move. to uh, move item C to item A. Okay. All those, all those in favor? So we're going to do the. Out need a second. Need a second. A second. Mr. Grillo. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And also, Commissioner Grillo, I'm sorry. Um, Karan is back on. <laughs> You're back to the alternate again. Well, welcome back. But you're not making any actions at this point anyway. So. No, no. So we're going to do the outdoor storage and industrial zone discussion. I have a couple of things, too. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, please identify yourself, name and address, and record, please. Good evening. Uh, my, good, my name is Mark Lockwood, and I also have uh, Robert Fry. 
We're attorneys representing Connecticut Mulch and Connecticut Organics on Mullen Road, 18 and 70 Mullen Road. So, and thank you for uh, reordering the agenda. No problem. <clears throat> we look kind of lonely sitting out there, so we said, yeah. oh, let's go. <laughs> we saw, we saw it thinning out quickly, so yeah. that's we moved up front. So. Yeah. Um, well, we're here this evening to uh, discuss the uh, storage requirements in the industrial zone. Our client, Connecticut Mulch, uh, they have an agricultural processing uh, on properties on Mullen Road where they process forestry products. Uh, one of their products is wood mulch that they make. And then they have a bagging facility on 18 Mullen Road that bags the mulch. That mulch is subsequently stored until it's ready to go to market uh, uh, for various homeowners to use. Uh, currently, the 20% um, storage requirement that's in the regulations creates a bottleneck and an inefficiency for our client in the industrial zones for uh, them not being able to uh, have production. They uh, run out of space. Uh, and as you can imagine, the mulch product and, and the agricultural need here uh, needs a high demand in the springtime. And so they'd like to, right now, they're, they're unable to use their, their uh, complete land. So what we're here for tonight is to uh, present, to ask the commission if they would look at the text amendment to uh, the regulation um, in 6.30 um, section uh, to, to modify that, increase that. And we are, we're asking that for a couple of reasons. One is we feel not just for our client, but for um, anyone in an industrial zone, a 20% requirement is a, a very low uh, threshold. and. Uh, is not really an efficient use of land for the, for the landowner and the business. Um, further, the special permit process, uh, I think, gives the commission a great level of discretion. You, you, know, you use it all the time and allows you to look at the individual characteristics of a lot to see is 60 percent or correct, 50 percent, whatever, whatever that lot would do. It doesn't hinder you by perhaps what might be an arbitrary limit. Um, Economic development, the, uh, the facility here is hindered. They're not able to maximize their facility that they have in supporting uh, their forestry processing that they're doing today. Um, the local distribution, we're trying to keep the mulch here so they can uh, distribute it locally and uh, hopefully it cuts down on how many trucks are coming from out of the area. So, uh, And all of the uh, items we're talking about here today are also we think something that the plan of conservation and development uh, support. So um, we're just here to, to talk to you to see if uh, um, we can uh, get some information from you if you need something further, because we'd like to uh, go with the text amendment. I gave some uh, proposed language for that. Um, we did uh, um, modify it to include the side yard because it's different lots, uh, as I mentioned. Um, have the need. In fact, this is the lot for our client. Uh, has quite a large side yard, just the way the lot is shaped. And, um, and we also modified the, the screening since, again, each lot may have different needs uh, for how screening should be developed and not uh, one size fits all. So um, that's what we're here for. And then we would intend if the commission were to approve the change and we would, we would come back to modify the special permit um, and go through that discussion on the application process. So I'll throw it out to any questions or. Well, I, I thank you. First of all, I'm looking around here. I guess I didn't really want to go first, but no one is raising their hand. So I guess I will. First of all, thank you for, you know, bringing this to our attention and, and giving us actually some ideas on the language um, that could be added if we decided to do this and, and have staff start looking at this. Um, I particularly liked the idea that if we were to go forward, you particularly mentioned it here, uh, you could limit the increased storage to finish agricultural project products only, because that's one of my concerns would be to open this up. But, you know, so I like the idea that you brought that to our attention right off the bat. I, I highlighted that one. Um, one of my, one of my concern, two of my concerns was 20% uh, to 60% is a pretty, pretty big, considerable jump. And I'm a little uncomfortable about side yard. Um, but I'm willing to listen to my other commissioners and, and talk about this. I, generally speaking, I certainly understand your need and desire and understand maybe we could be doing something a little bit more to open it up in the agricultural area, not in the industrial area. That's, that's just my, my comments. Commissioner Will? 
Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, I know a lot about that area. Uh, I wanted to speak to the commission a little bit um, just to fill you in on that area just because uh, my building is across the street. Okay, so I see it. Uh, where he's talking about, first of all, where we allowed them to do the bagging, he's got that prestige if you go by there they're all stacked perfectly height perfect rows and you can see it going down three quarters of the street there is no barrier so he has an empty lot between that building and his wood forestry shop which is clear wide open you can see from the road any way that you come in on Mullen the whole packaging system of the bagging um, there is a lot of empty space for me and this is just my personal thing um, there's not no residential down that end anymore there was someone there um, unfortunately he passed so there is no residential on that whole part um, if he if we were to allow him to expand that um, I don't think the view would change the view that there is now a because you see the whole yard that's existing now um, and like I said if you ever drove by it they're not just placed these pallets aren't just placed all over the place they are I mean perfect rows and he's right the lot they just started with I'm gonna say a year ago packing is full thousands of bags are there um, me myself i i know i can't vote on this tonight but i just wanted the commission to know if you saw this um maybe you didn't have to go the 60 but there is a lot of land in between and actually i think if we allowed him to use that it would hide the trees that he's piling up there it would actually hide that if you would ever drive you and know what I'm talking about. You know, they bring the trees in, they take the bark off it, that goes down the street, then that gets mulched, then that mulch gets brought up to the top of the street, and that gets bagged. Awesome out. I mean, it's cool how it works, but uh, you won't notice the difference. So it would be on your discussion on, are we gonna allow them to use that much does that mean that we tie our hands to let everybody else use that much that's the only thing that i see right. otherwise i i would not see a problem it, it it is the problem that you guys going from 20 to 60 how many other of these companies are going to use you as an example and say well you let them use all of their land and we <clears throat> can't use ours even though like i said it's prestige i know it's perfect everything is I mean, I could probably put a level on every one of them pallets in that acre lot, and it'd be perfectly level. But that's my only concern. What would First, that? Well, if I can't, we're not we're not going to be voting on anything tonight. Right. What they're doing is they're proposing to us a change to our regulations, and right. which we would work with staff okay. over the next month or so, whatever. To, if we decided right. to do but, that, and then eventually they would have to come back from. Uh, that would be my only permit. really concern, though, and maybe staff would probably agree with. It's just that who do we? Are we allowed to let them have that special? But keep in mind of what else is out there. Well, that's why I mentioned agricultural use only. And that's if that's the case, I, realistically, agricultural I don't, products or use, however you want to word it. Are, are you all set? I am. Thank you, Mr. Petronella. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, I feel the twenty percent is too low, personally, um, and I, I think it would help. Um, if, if we were able to visualize, you know, I see that, you know, you're showing your outside storage area. Um, but if you had a plan that showed like your, your pathways, your roadways, and okay, here's our storage, here's how we're going to get there, and, it, and this is going to be all storage. And then just for visually, the 60%, I'm on the fence. I don't know if it's too much or too little or, or, or wherever it might be. But, uh, um, 
you know, I, I definitely think 20 percent is much too low. Uh, I'm against restricting it to agricultural. Uh, it, it, it's industrial land. This is a text amendment for industrial. Uh, this commission looked at an application not too long ago in the industrial park, which approved uh, what I considered storage, but but it, but it did not consider this um, section. They didn't have to justify if they were using 20 percent or not. I think that they're using far more than that, and we approved it. Um, and uh, when they wanted more storage, they came back in and they said, in instead of going 16 feet high, can we go 24 feet high? So, you know, so we gave it to them. So, you know, I, I, and I was totally against that. So to, uh, to me, we've already skirted this. So I, I, I think it needs to be increased. Um, I think 20 percent is too low, um, and, and I think that, uh, um, you know, in industrial use, yeah, you, you know, people do have product uh, that uh, uh, cannot be stored inside, it's outside, and so forth, and for what you do, uh, especially for that. So, um, you know, I, I just don't know if that 60 percent is, is too much or, or too little. It's, it's probably on, on, a, on a higher end of anything. I wouldn't say go over it, but uh, I'd say 20 percent is definitely, definitely too low. If, may we speak? Yes. Uh, so, yeah, this is, a, this so is, an, this is may, an open discussion. Yes. No, thank you. Um, yeah, welcome. Uh, if I may address a couple of the concerns, and thank you both of the commissioners for your uh, comments. The 60 percent is congruent with the current uh, uh, regulations around uh, impervious um, ground cover. That's where the 60% came from. Uh, so it's where it seemed to make sense there. And I want to make clear that uh, the special permit process still allows the commission to, you know, reduce that from 60% on a case by case basis. Uh, right now, the, the, the regulation as it's written not only uh, hamstrings people like our client, but also hamstrings you guys from allowing in, in places where there are, as uh, Commissioner Grillo said, this is a this is a space where there is not residential right on top of it. Um, it, it, it disallows you guys from having the, the latitude to say, yes, in this case, 50%, 60% is, is appropriate. Uh, so that's why we are, we are pushing the 60% number. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for your input. Commissioner I agree with uh, Commissioner Petronello. 20% is too low. But unfortunately, we do have industrial zones that are yep. in and are, are surrounded by residential area. So to go 60%, I hear what you're saying about impervious surface. But if I were living next to an industrial area, as some of these people are, I don't want to be looking out my window and seeing 60% of the lot, that lot being covered with outdoor storage. Um, so I think we have to look at, take a look at all of our industrial areas and where they're lying. Uh, but I do agree 20% is too low. So um, I'm not comfortable with the 60%. So that's just my concern. Hold on, Commissioner Hinckley hasn't commented yet. John, if you don't mind, we'll let her go first. I agree with what everybody has said. 20% um, might not be enough, but I think 60% is way too much. Uh, fences in industrial zone, you're tidy, and, and that's great that you're tidy, but not every property owner, or landowner, or business owner is tidy. And as Linda DeGray said, look out the window because you happen to live in an industrial zone which is prevalent all over town, and you have a tidy, uh, messy neighbor, you have 60% messy, which is your whole view of the property. I think that since fences can only be eight foot tall, I think 60% is too much, and I think it should be more like, I don't know, tops 40%. And I also think that it should be a special use permit so that each one can be looked at for its value. And if it's a site plan review, we're limited to what we can do for the neighbors. And I really think that not all products are conducive to being put outdoors. And um, again, 
you're tidy and it's wonderful and you've got it all gridded and everything and that's great but you're one person and we open the door and it's to everybody all throughout the town that's industrial one so i think you have to understand that if we don't go along with 60 percent thank you sure. uh, yeah thank you uh, uh to, uh, to answer uh, or to respond to one of the one of the comments made by uh, commissioner uh, de gray um, with respect to the uh, an industrial zone being adjacent to a residential zone, uh, there is a, a more buffer requirement, you know, uh, for that residential area. So, if I'm not mistaken, um, you, you lose that area of buffer in your in your calculation. I would assume that that that's how it would work. Um, so, but but anyway, I just wanted to, you know, uh, address that and. You know, again, for, for outside storage, um, industrial, um, you know, Commissioner Grillo and uh, construction operations and, and that type of things in which, you know, we we all know about. Um, that, that's why I'm opposed to limiting it to just agricultural use, because there, there's a lot of uh, uh, industrial uses that need that have to have outside storage that are just almost impossible to, to put everything inside. So, and, and again, um, I, I certainly support an increase. What it is, uh, I'm, I'm just a, a little bit on the fence with that. So, um, and you know, may, may, maybe staff can uh, uh, help us out with uh, 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 if there's if there's other uh, municipalities in the area that that have something. Um, uh, similar to that, uh, I certainly would appreciate seeing something similar. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Karan. Oh, Karan. <laughs> Karan, I'm sorry. I just can't get used to you being uh, remote tonight. I apologize. Please. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. <laughs> I'm looking this way and that way. Go ahead, Karan. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I am remote today. Uh, Taken care. Anyway, uh, I think I agree with <clears throat> with the uh, with various commissioners and how best can we provide for promoting the industrial use, depending on the type of industry, because there are all kinds of industries that we have, and we may have more. The part that Commissioner Petronello did bring up is important that there is a buffer requirement between an industrial and a residential zone. It has been on our books for a long time, and I'm sure the staff will be able to update us on that. So going with higher coverage, uh, I don't see a problem. What I'd like to add or somehow draw attention to is that there are buffer requirements when they are adjacent to a zone that's not industrial, and that should be kept in mind. But other than that, I'm in favor of the tax changes, and thank you. That suggestion, we, do you want to make a yeah. comment, or yeah. do we, we table it? No, I want to make a comment. No. Go ahead, yeah. Commissioner Lionel. Go ahead. Um, so if we set it, and maybe the staffs, so we set it at, we'll, we'll use 60. As we look at applications as they come in, can we back down from the 60? Because it sounds like that's what they were saying, that we're held to 20 and we can't go any higher, but if we say 60, we can go lower, depending on, um, I was asking her. Um, Lori? Well, I, I think, you, I mean, whatever the regulation says is what you can do. If it says that they could have up to 60%, you'd have to have some other Reason. Uh, criteria in there saying you could only have 60% if A, B, and C, or, you know, you've got certain buffers or something like that. So, but typically you just say it's, X percent. Okay. I mean, they uh, could propose. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to make a recommendation this time, if I may, from the chair, is that um, they've given us good information tonight. I think we're all interested in, in looking at some different scenarios here. I would request that maybe staff put something a little bit from here, a couple different scenarios. We table this item, put it on the agenda for next meeting, and we pick back up the discussion. It does definitely seem to be um, some uh, support for some type of change here and, and let staff kind of work with us and give us a few scenarios and uh, we'll discuss it at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Does that sound? Yeah. Also, if I may, if, if I can, if, if, if the applicant can uh, uh, do a plan that show, as I requested, 
uh, show, show the storage area with your pathways and your roadways. And this way here, show it at 60% if that's what you want and say, this is what it looks like at 60%. It gives us a better idea to say, how much is that really? That now we can see it and, and say, because right now we're just, it's just a number that we're looking at and, and, and you're uh, uh, tripling what it is now. So, so to us, well, that's a big number. Is, is it unreasonable? But if you see it, and then now we can see, you know, what 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 you're doing and what you're talking about, and, and it'll give us a better idea, in my opinion. You could even do conversely. You could do something that says, well, this may look like at 40 percent or 50 percent, as well. I'll leave that to you. But I think show us 60 if that's what you're looking to do. I think, Mr. Chairman, Commission, we, that's something we can go back and work up. We we had in the packet a, a sample plan, right? And yeah. we didn't bring a lot of discussion because we want to work on the text amendment first. Yeah. Then, right. I agree with uh, um, Commissioner Hagley that you know, we would want to go to a special permit like it is yep. today. Yep. We're not looking to change it to a site plan. Yeah. Again, we want to uh, give give all of you the ability to look at the characteristics. Like if it's if we're near a residential, not near a residential. Uh, the main point is, is, is you know, uh, the business is really hindered right now. It's, it's, it's not, it's not a good situation. It's not very inefficient, uh, especially, um, you know, they had to stop production because there's no, no room. Yep, totally so, understand. Yeah, so that, so we're trying to get some efficiency, and we're open to discussion if the commission's concerned on the percentages. Is uh, we have to understand too. We're looking at from a townwide standpoint, correct. not just your right. business. So that's why, yes, I, we value your input. We want your input. You're helping us. We're going to pass it off to staff. And then they're going to work with us, and we'll see what we can do from a yep. townwide standpoint. Yep. And then we'd okay. be glad to, you know, if you we got the yep. information on the aisles, and yep. uh, we'll talk with Larry yeah. if you, you know, needs to come back for the next one. One more quick point. I understand what you guys are trying to are doing here, and I'm, I apologize for dragging it out. Uh, uh, two more quick points. This really does for uh, across not just our client, but uh, across anyone who would, this would apply to. It would have impacts up and down the supply chain. Uh, Commissioner Grillo brought up the, the yep. trees that, you know, you see on, on Mullen Road. You know, those sorts of things move along much faster when you can store and move more product. Yep. Um, the other thing was, was about agricultural product. And, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, what you brought up, uh, just to talk about how we have discussed how our, our client makes an agricultural product that is perishable by its nature. And, and that was one thing we were, we were very sensitive to, that you guys would be sensitive to. You don't want things out there sitting rusting that could be there forever. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's possible for staff and, and, and our client to come up with a, a way to, to meet that need. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll, I'll entertain a motion just for make it official. I probably don't have to do this, but we're going to do it anyways. Is there a motion to table this item so we can pick it back up the next meeting or when staff is ready? So Make moved. Motion, motion made by Commissioner Lamo, seconded by Vice Chairman Higley to table this item for further input. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Well, thank, you really for, do it. No, thank, thank you. Thank you for taking it up. Appreciate it. No, no problem. <laughs> All right, we're on to next commission bylaws. And I'm just going to pass this out because I am a Robert Rules of Order guy and I am, I love procedures. So I actually have a couple of suggestions for some changes to our bylaws. Can pass this down. Uh, can, I don't know. I gave one to Vin. Yeah, Vin, can you? Um, and I got some more coming. Yeah, here. All right. So I have a couple of suggestions, if I may, with everybody to our bylaws. Like, like you, like most of you, I've been on very many different boards in, through the years. And I'm open to any input, but I'll, since I got the handle, I guess I'll start. Um, on section five, attendance and designation of alternate members. Let everybody get there. Section five. That's on page one. I lost my hand. Okay, we can, you can share with me if you want. I don't know what it is in Okay, section five. Everybody, everybody there? Yep. yep. Basically, it says all members are expected to call the planning officer if they are unable to attend. I'd like to suggest a change that all members are expected to contact the planning office unable because we do do yeah. things with email now. Yes, and our bylaws say call. We don't want to call anybody out if they. Yeah. So I would recommend that we change all members are expected to contact the planning office if they are unable to attend. Okay. Is that agreeable with everyone? Yeah. And at the end of that, Paragraph alternate shall be so designated by rotation in alphabetical order. Um, I think we need to clarify uh, as we go forward. Alternate shall be so designated by rotation in alphabetical order on a monthly basis. 
So we're not going meeting to meeting, we're going monthly basis. So for instance, um, January, who's, no, who's actually, I don't know if you know, uh, Commissioner Korea resigned. So um, I didn't this, know that. Yeah, yeah. this would have been his month. Mr. Dean's month would be next month, and Mr. Grillo's month would be in uh, March. Having said that, we all know that sometimes that alternate can't make it either. So the wording I'm adding is on a monthly basis, period, the monthly rotation does not reset if the designated alternate is unable to attend. For instance, uh, uh, Mr. D'Antonio has been sitting for another alternate, and if that alternate showed up next month, he doesn't start his rotation. He lost his month. Nice. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I would recommend we add that language. Now, again, I'll read it. Alternate shall be so designated by rotation in alphabetical order on a monthly basis. The monthly rotation does not reset if the designated alternate is unable to attend. Yep. Does that sound? Maybe, maybe just clarify uh, alphabetical by last name, just to, I mean, if we're, if we're just going to clarify sure. the details. Yep, sure. I'll do, add that. Let me do it again. And the reason why I'm doing this is so it's not ambiguous. I think everybody's seeing my eyes here. I don't want it to be ambiguous anymore. Okay. Alternate shall be so designated by rotation in alphabetical order by last name on a monthly basis. The monthly rotation does not reset if the designated alternate is unable to attend. Right. Everybody seems to be in agreement with that. Um, Article 6. Section 5. Let me know when you're all there. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, I'm no, sorry. No, you're, I'm uh, fine. In the absence or incapacity of the secretary, the second vice uh, chairman shall perform the secretary's duties. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Yes. <laughs> In the absence of the secretary and second vice chairman, the vice chairman shall assume the secretary's duties. We're not, there's nothing in the bylaws that states that. Okay. So if, you know, as you know, Tony couldn't make it, Linda's second, what if she wasn't here? We'd have to pass something special to have someone else. So I think in our bylaws it needs to state that. Again, in the absence of the secretary and the second vice chairman, the vice chairman or first vice chairman shall assume the secretary's duties. That That's why it's sense. clear yeah. and there's no discussion, there's no yeah. ambiguous about it. Yes, right, exactly. Section four clarifies two levels, so this just makes it in sync yep. with the section above it. Uh -huh. And then we get to section eight. We got the section eight, I know, and I, I know we're gonna have some discussion, which is good, I love discussion with you guys. Um, section eight, um, forget section five, we'll, that will be renumbered, because that should be the last section of section eight, and that's you know about Robert Rules of Order. I'm recommending a new section five, using a cell phone or an email application during the meeting will be prohibited unless authorized by the chairman. Well, my personal yeah. opinion, I, my personal opinion is I think it's inappropriate for us to be communicating with anyone, either texting or emailing while the movie meeting is going on. I'm not saying anyone is. No. I just think we need to button that up. I'm saying unless authorized by the chairman, because we all have families, yes. and someone might be ill at home, you're waiting for a text. Um, someone might be having a child. Yeah. Um, so yes, you know, listen, I need to be on tonight because so and so is sick. I, I might get called out. No problem. I just feel we need to add that so this way there's no allegations of anyone texting or communicating with anyone during the meeting. Well, also, if you are on television and you are using your cell phone or email, it then goes under the FOI and somebody can say, hey, you were texting somebody in the audience and then they can take your cell phone yeah, or your yeah, computer. So I just, and yeah, absolutely. And I couldn't agree. So I think we just, by having that in the bylaws, Yep. And it still leaves us a room where the chairman could say, yeah, go ahead. You know, yeah, no problem. Yep. I understand your yep. personal predicament tonight. Yes. Be my guest. But this way, we're just not doing that. Okay. Go, go ahead, Karan. Go ahead, Karan. Yeah. Uh, my, my question, question was, was, do we, we have, have any provision, provision for remote attendance like I'm doing today? The next item. <laughs> <laughs> was thinking along the same line. Um, I just put that down. I, 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 I have it here, talking about remote participation. Um, actually, no offense, but you know, Lori and I actually had a chat about that the other day, about you know, what, do, what do we do about remote participation? Um, I, didn't, I don't have anything written up, because I don't know what you guys want. Do you guys want to allow remote participation? Um, we, we do have alternates. That's kind of like what alternates are for, but we are still in COVID. Do you want to kind of leave it open? So if I can, um, we had our first meeting. 
uh, Tony did right. access remote. Yeah. You know, that, to me, that was a special circumstance. Um, the, the man was ill. We were electing officers. Yep. So um, I thought that was appropriate. Uh, uh, Kiran has a, a, a health right. issue. Um, so I just I want to throw out, are you guys okay with it? With remote participation, we'll take Quran instance tonight, or do we want to stop that unless we're all on remote, like the Board of Education just did? No, I think this is fine because in the past we didn't have this tool, and you know if somebody was sick, they had a cold or whatever the flu. In the past, when we just had colds and flu, flu um, you were just allowed to watch the meeting, not be able to participate and then be able to vote on the minutes. And also if there was a public hearing and you, and it was going on for more than one meeting, you'd at least know what was going on. But to be able to do this, and it was allowed under COVID, why not continue to use it? I mean, no. you know, 10 years from now, we could have a, uh, somebody who has young children and can't make a meeting because of babysitting situations. Why they not? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, can't be here. Why are any of us? Here? No, it, I'm no, just almost, saying. Uh, through, the, through the chair. Yep. yep through the, that's okay. I just don't want to. Yeah. That's why I'm. You know, it's not getting out of hand. It's no, not, I'm just saying. Yeah. That's okay. No, no, Vinny. That's all right. No. Commissioner Alamo. Yeah. Um, I, I think we're we're doing uh, this remote um, now because we're under the go the governor's emergency rule. That's why it's only legal, I believe. I think, and I hope soon, that we get out of this world we're living in and we go back to normal. And if you're a member of a board, you have obligation to attend and be at those meetings. If you're going to volunteer to do this, yeah. I think it'll, it, it just gives too much opportunity for people to say, you know what, I'm just going to stay home tonight and do it remotely. I think we go back to the way it was before this emergency uh, order was ruled and get back to living the way we lived before. Yeah. If you're, if you're going to become a member, you've got to be dedicated and you have to be responsible to be here. That's my, that's my feeling. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Commissioner Higley? I agree with the general consensus. I think if you take the responsibility of coming to a, signing on to be a commissioner on a, med, on a committee, then you should be here. If you're sick, then you should stay home and go to bed. I think that if it's a quorum issue, that's one thing. I think there should be some kind of wording that if you're um, down some members and you need a quorum and there's only somebody at home with a really bad infection or something, then they can be on so that the meeting can be held for the applicant. Otherwise, as somebody said, that's what we have alternates for. It's like you come, you do your job, or as somebody else said, you're on the wrong board. Just to no, hold on. Let, me, let me go this way okay. first. Any, any, uh, yeah. Just a quick comment: is yeah. is the public right now? Are they still allowed to remote in to these meetings? What, what, this is a live meeting. Yeah, yeah. And, and they can watch it. However, are, can can they remote in to, to be a participant? No, no. Right no. now, no. Unless no, we set it cannot. up as such. Right. Okay. All right. That, that, that's it. I just I had, had that curiosity. Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hearing I'm what Commissioner Higley was saying. But we have to check with staff and, and uh, legal to see if it's even legal, because we're doing this legally now under I'm, emergency yeah. order. Yeah. Okay. We don't even know if we can do it going forward after the order is lifted. Lou so that's another for our comments. Yeah, sorry. No, I'm just asking for comments. Right. Yeah. That's what we have to yeah. find that out. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know if we can do it. Yep. And I, and I think Lori wanted to comment. Um, this is here to stay. I pretty much will guarantee that this will become part of the statutes that we could, you could have remote meetings in the future. So I do think that the remote meetings are only used if needed. Right now, the EDC decided that they all wanted to stay remote. They've stayed remote for over a year, and they might stay remote forever, but they're not a big public participation board, right? Um, I don't see any reason why we couldn't invite or, or allow a commissioner to come in because of an illness or, you know what, I'm going to be traveling for work for a month, but I, you know, I still want to participate in my hearing, you know, come to the meeting. 
So, you know, let me, you know, remote in from wherever I am at work or wherever. Um, what's wrong with that? I mean, you, that you still have somebody there. They're participating. They're, you know, but, but to do it on a regular basis, I, you know, I agree. You probably, you know, you should be here. If, you know, if everybody else is here and we're not having a full remote meeting, then, yeah, you should make every effort to attend. But if you're sick or you have a family member that's sick or you're traveling, why not allow them to come in remotely? I, I, I will I, say that the, this, yeah. this is here to stay. Yeah. This is not going to go away. Some form or another. Actually, we're building, if, if, in case maybe some of you don't know, hopefully you all know, if I may. Actually, downstairs, they're building a um, multimedia virtual meeting room where the old tax office used to be. So this is here to stay. I like to make, we have a lot of other things to discuss tonight, so I like to make a mandation. All the other changes to the bylaws seem to be accepted. I'll have a vote on that in a minute. Why don't we, why don't we just leave, why don't we leave this item open for now? You bring a good point. We are under the Governor's Emergency right. Act. Yeah, yeah. It's something for us to think about going forward. Let's see how it evolves right. um, and how we grow into it. And it's working. We're comfortable, not comfortable, but it's working. Let's, why don't we leave it as it is? We can always revisit it in our bylaws and with staff later. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to make, uh, so I'll make a motion to accept the rules that I did. Um, and I'll work with staff about making sure they got, you know, in, in the, in the bylaws. This. Yeah. But if someone make a motion to um, Can I just make one last comment? Sure. If that's all right. Um, just, you, you do specify new section six, and, and just a thought to, to consider is that uh, in, in article five, which covers attendance, it could be worth tying in, uh, you know, the, the preference for attendance in person. Um, and uh, you know, maybe in informing the chairman of the inability to attend in person. Uh, so I just want to point that out there. There could be a yeah, they do do that now, uh, Chris. Let you know they they do notify. I think Lori and myself from the commissioner wanted to do remotely. Um, I know Tony did that and Karan did that this time. So that's kind of already happening. Yeah. Yes, well, we, yeah, yeah so I, I, just, it's a good place to spell it out. In addition yeah. to it, when we wait, we'll come back and revisit all that. If you don't, if you don't mind, if that's yeah, okay and, with you. Yep. Yeah, yeah, just. Uh, uh, a motion was made by Commissioner Lamo, seconded by Commissioner Higley to accept the bylaw changes that Chairman Fiore suggested. I'll work with staff to make sure they get in the paper for us. All those in favor? Aye. I don't they believe we need to have a roll call vote for that, I don't believe. Okay. Now we're moving on to discussion on cannabis. Um, very quickly, just to give you an update, two things. Um, I, I just do before I open up for discussion. What the heck did I do with that? Oh, here we go. Uh, just, to let, just to let you know, as you, as you all are probably fully aware, the town council did pass by resolution the act, yep. however it's worded to support us going forward to add this uh, to our, res, our re regulations in some form or another. Um, so just to make you aware that that was passed by the council, um, vast majority vote. Um, so that is something they've asked us to do is to add the some type of um, uh, regulate you know update our regulations to include the cannabis uh, establishments. Also, I do want to mention, um, and I'm not sure we can do this, but I want to mention it. Uh, Councilman Santanella did call me to say that he is organizing a tour in Holyoke of a cannabis cultivation company uh, next Thursday at two o'clock. Um, and I believe, Lori, that there's probably, since this is regulation, this is not any type of application, that we're free to go and do these uh, tour with a councilman. I'm not really sure if, if we are. If there's more than two of you, it's a quorum, and we'll have to notice it. Okay, right, right, because it would be considered a meeting. So I, 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 I definitely want to go. And I, so I guess we can only have two. <laughs> well, and and I'll tell you what, I, you I'm sure. You can have I, more, but we need to notice it as a meeting. Yeah. That dude smoking and on smoking. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. I would like what to go. I'm, I'm taking my phone out to check the date. It's next Thursday at a uh, meeting here at 1.30 to go up to Holyoke for a 2 p.m. tour of their cannabis cultivations. It's down by the old canal. Um, I know an area well having worked in Holyoke for a while. So what time on Thursday? Two o'clock. But if we have more than two of us go, as Lori says, we have to, we have to publish it as a meeting. So... I'm interested in going. All right. Is that okay? And, and I'm sure Mr. Santanella would be organizing another tour for two others at another time. Is that okay? And you'll be coming back with your comments. For the I will. Meeting. I will. There you go. To the third, 1.30. Oh. 
at one thirty. So, yeah. yep, Commissioner Alima and I will be going with um, with uh, uh, Councilman Santanella up to the Holy. Oak. Take a tour of it. Yeah, see, I want to see so it. Know, yeah. So we know yeah. what we're talking about. Absolutely. It's too- do you know the name of it? I mean, I need to. He, I can find. He didn't give me the name. He just said it was the a, a cannabis cultivation okay. company in Holyoke, Mass. I, <laughs> I didn't ask. To be honest, I didn't think to ask for a name. So it's just it's just two. There's just the two of us going. Okay. Uh, again, it's not that you can't have more, but if you do, we just need to do the proper notices. Yeah, it's up to you guys. I mean, I hope some more than two. It's, 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 uh, no. Okay, so it's just just going to be Commissioner Lime and I. Jeez. Hey, Frank, we can yeah, we'll, we'll buy lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. With John, wait a minute. That's all three of us in yeah. the same cuisine. I know. Uh, right. <laughs> this could be interesting. Our grandparents used to cook together. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I'm, again, I'll, I'll start. This is on, on the table. I'll open up discussion. Hmm. So, I, I'll go. Um, so, when they... I think maybe the meeting after the council approved it. I'm not sure which one it was. So I I was here and I spoke as a member of this board, this commission. And because they were talking about, you know, having a referendum. And I was saying, well, maybe that's good because we could find out which area town voted heavier for it and which didn't, you know, by the results of the, if there was a referendum. But now that I look at this statute, I believe it's only allowed in the industrial zone, correct? No. It's not? No. Okay. So that blows that. I thought it no. did. I was going to say, well, that takes care of that because it's only going to be in industrial, but it's um, not. You could, again. No, I, but I thought it was no. by the state saying no. it could only could be in industrial. No. If I'm not mistaken, any, the state, the state uh, recognizes the higher in the lottery for distressed cities or towns, and unfortunately we're not one of them. So, for instance, I hate to use another, but Norwich, for instance, gets an extra balls in the lottery because their area is considered distressed. Mm-hmm. That's about the only thing I know from it. I thought somebody I, else even brought it up that night, a past, uh, past board, a past uh, planning and zoning member said it was uh, industrial. Nope. So I thought it was. So that's, some that's town, bad some town enacted that. Okay. So that's, All right. Again, that's what they some, did. Yeah, yeah. Some town said it only in, uh, we don't have that one here in this packet. So, some yeah. town did pass their their regulation yeah. only in an industrial zone so now we have to we have to consider the whole town when we're we have to consider decisions. the whole town okay yeah okay thanks thanks for the clarification yeah i have to be honest with you i i read through this and and i'm just going to throw this out for you guys to think about again we're not we're not, we're not making any decisions tonight but we do need to kind of move on this or we're going to miss the next lottery there the other and that that is really the goal but i actually i read the west haven connecticut one which I thought needed to be enfilized a little bit. Um, I thought that made the most sense with some added things to it. Um, the West Haven one sounded generally fine to me, except for, um, yeah, I'll wait if anyone, if anyone brought it with them. I don't have any. I forgot it. Okay. I thought West Haven sounded good, except for um, number two, where it says no marijuana dispensary or production facility shall be permitted on a site that is less than 800 feet from any residentially zoned land as defined as city zoning regulations. And the reason why that particular item and that um, uh, ordinance that, that West Haven did bother me is that that would mean you never could have one in, 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 in Thompsonville because you pretty much everything's within 800 foot of a house. Um, I liked, uh, other than that, I liked the whole um, layout of that one. I, I, did, I looked at Plainville. I liked the fact that Plainville said you needed to have a required permit. And also I liked the fact that they stated, that's on the next page, that they had to had state compliance, that they actually detailed that out. And I liked one part of East Lime we're ba- and, I, and I think it's very important that this gets stated in our regulation, whatever one we finally come out with, where actually it states, sales and consumption, all sales or, cult- or cultivation shall occur within a building and no consumption use of the product shall occur on site. It's already been mentioned to me that that should be in your regulation. You need to have that in there because you don't want to open that up. You don't want people buying and going right outside and start smoking or whatever have you. So that needs to be in there. Is, is, that, is that zoning though, or is that is that local ordinance? Because no, this is zoning. These are zoning. I'm sorry. I, I, this is zoning. No, no, no. I get that, but yeah. but I'm saying, does that does that really fall within zoning jurisdiction, or is that yeah. more just local no, no, ordinance? Because I know in our regulations. 
I, I, I'm not sure if the zoning has the right to regulate the consumption. Oh, really? I, I think that that's got to come from an ordinance. And I think there is something from the state, if I remember correctly, when I was reading this whole law, which is a little comprehensive, um, that you cannot openly use marijuana in public spaces. So, uh, and you have to be 25 feet away from a window, door, or ventilation, no public spaces. So you pretty much have to do it in your own house. Yeah. So yeah. You know, using it outside in the parking lot would be prohibited by state law. Right, by state law. Could be. I just threw it out there. It caught my eye when I was reading yeah. through these. Oh. Can I go again? Oh, oh. <laughs> Karan. Oh, we're gonna get, let's go to Karan for us this time, everyone. Go ahead, Karan. We don't see him. I think we're getting He's more right ordinance. <laughs> and, and go ahead, Ben, say what you just said. Because we have no, that, I, that acts into it. At the At state the level, we have what's called the Liquor Control Commission, and they set certain standards, and those standards do include uh, very specific requirements such as you cannot consume alcohol in the shop you buy it in a package store or something. Uh, how many hours can the bar be open and so on and so forth. So there should be something or there may be something at the state level on the use and uh, sale and growth of the cannabis. So if those regulations are available, we should basically incorporate them because that's something we cannot change. Thank you. Um, absolutely. Ben? Well, I was just going to add uh, that the actual use of it, I don't like if, it, for example, the smoking of, of uh, cannabis, I don't know if we could actually regulate that with zoning regulations. That would be, I mean, because somebody could buy, go to a dispensary, buy edibles, take them. You wouldn't even know. They'd be walking around. I mean, it's to try and regulate the actual use of it. Um, I think the smoking of it would be more of an ordinance thing and not. Planning and zoning. So, regular. how did these lime get away with it? I, I, would, I took it these weren't ordinances. I took it these were what we, you passed on to us for zoning regulations. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how they enforce that. Yeah, they okay. passed that's, it, but yeah, okay, that's a good point. That's no problem. Mr. Chair, yeah, hold on. It's Oregon. just like you can't restrict um, where people, where, where like a company travels with their trucks. We've done it. But it's not enforceable. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, right. once you get into the right of way, we have no jurisdiction. Yeah. So once we get in, so I think a lot of towns have restricted the the smoking of cannabis or anything, you know, on on town properties, things like that. But that that is not from a zoning regulation. From, from ordinance. Yeah. Council ordinance. Yeah. Okay. The big things that we need to consider yep. is what zones would you permit it in? Right. How far do you want them to be from uh, a School, School yep. church, playground, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Um, and whether or not there's, um, you know, what do we consider it a retail use? Do we just put it in as a new use? So those are the things that I think we really need to be discussing. What, what am I missing? Uh, I just noted uh, in some of these other uh, regulations that have been drafted, um, there's... Uh, some require security plans to be submitted through the local police department. Um, whatever fertilizers and pesticides are used for growing have to get checked off by the fire fire safety. And um, so there are, uh, you know, other additional things that can be added in that have to yeah. be conditions satisfied with a special permit for this kind of use. Do you, do you have any idea what big, have you heard anything in your travels and your organizations that you belong to that what the big cities in Connecticut are doing? Now, we've heard about West Haven, and I think there's a couple other towns. Norwich has done something. But I'm not hearing anything of what Hartford or New Haven or Bridgeport or Stanford, Waterbury are doing. Have you, have either of you heard anything what's going on in those towns concerning this issue? We'd have to look it up. Yeah, I think the largest uh, community that I looked into was East Hartford um, that had it. Drafted uh, regulations regarding this. Um, Would you be kind enough for for the chairman to, to kind of look up Norwich's and see what see what they've done? Okay, I appreciate that. I'm sorry. No, Would you like Would you like like Bridgeport as well, or it, let's look up? Yeah, something. Yeah, I don't need. We don't need them all, all right. but you know, you know, say another another. So, um, shoot, I just lost my thought. 
But I, I personally think we need to be looking at both. We need to be looking at the cultivation and the retail sale. We can't just be looking at one. Oh, right. Um, what I was going to bring up is, is that um, the town of Enfield will only be eligible for one of each. Right, exactly. So we're not looking at numerous. No. However, that could change in the future. So, um, you know, that's something to consider. So, like, it, are, do you want a separating distance between um, cultivators or retail outlets? So, just in case in the future, if it's needed, we've got it in the ranks. So, I mean, I, I think that... Oh, no, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, we'll let me finish. But please. No, no, please finish. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, just pointing. I'm like point, I'm just point I got him. I yeah. think that um, we could probably all say that we don't want it in a residential zone, but I think the Thompsonville does kind of come into play. So it that does. is an interesting concept because pretty much, if you decide to have a separation distance to the residential units, that's almost going to be impossible in Thompsonville, and you know, I'm not sure that. I think we probably could regulate Thompsonville separately than the rest of the town. I mean, it's our transit-oriented development. And, yeah, the way the rates are set. Yeah, probably. so, right. I mean, we probably could do that, you know. So, but, um, you know, do you want it in a retail shopping mall? I mean, what, what if they wanted to come in and take over Best Buy? Yeah. yeah. It's just, you know, a, a business zone. I mean, it's not near any residential. Is that something that you would be open to should we allow it in the business regional should it be allowed in in the mall um, you know these are things that we want to start thinking about yep absolutely thank you yes Chris was first uh, yep I, I just want to uh, right bring up a, as an example we do have uh, regulation for um, for alcoholic liquor uh, establishments so we do have a, a good baseline uh you know roughly comparable in terms of um you know just substances right vices um so i think i think that's a really good baseline we, there's a separation a uh, thousand foot uh separation um between land use there um it, it would make sense for to me to be consistent um, so whatever we do, you know, if, if we were to go lower with cannabis, you know, there's some examples of 800 feet. Um, I, I think it would make sense to be consistent, but we, you know, we at least have the thousand foot uh, starting point. Uh, we also have the regulation for, um, um, oh, plus they're, you know, they're, they're, they're allowed by special permit only uh, across pretty much all uh, business and industrial uh, zones. So they'll all come through us, um, which makes sense, you know, again, to continue for consistency. Um, and there, there is um, uh, a special uh, section for uh, planned commercial developments within business uh, regional uh, districts, which allow for uh, us to waive um, separation requirements. So, so just a thought. Uh, again, using that as the baseline, I think that can help us with, uh, with you know, with Thompsonville Special District. Um, you know, a good way to accomplish that. Thank you. Mr. Petronello, did you have? Uh, yeah. yeah, I did. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, in reading through this, um, the, these examples, uh, there's a little something in here, you know, in, in every one for that uh, to be considered. Um, the my opinion is that uh, you know, you, you know, you worry about schools and and. Uh, playgrounds, etc., cetera, um, and, and looking at that and depending on, on the distance that w we're talking about to keep it from, uh, I mean, a good safe bet is always uh, like East Line, Connecticut. It, it's permitted in a uh, industrial zone. And, and, you know, that is generally far enough away from, from everything. And then you could even stipulate that if it's an industrial zone it's got to be so far uh, from from a re from the nearest residential area um that's just my opinion i i, I think it's safe uh to put it in a place like where best buy is uh in in in, in business general uh business regional things like that i'm certainly wouldn't advocate for that um that that uh, to me just uh, uh 
uh, can can hinder the other retail around it, possibly, and I, and I, and I don't want to do that, which 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 is a which is valuable uh, commodity to the town as well. Uh, so anyway, that's just where I'm I'm at with this right now. So thank you. No, thank you for your comments. Commissioner Grill? Um, I think Commissioner Lamo was before you, yes. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I, I was thinking, I know Kieran mentioned it and mentioned it down there, because I was thinking of, of a perspective of <clears throat> zoning rather than enforcement, right? That's what I've been thinking about. That's why I mentioned I thought it was the industrial zone. So same point. I think we have regulations about package stores and liquor stores relative to zoning and distances, and uh, that would be a good kickoff point or you know, start looking at that and see how those are, because um, I, I, I know from being in that business before, there are thousand feet from a church and mm -hmm. schools, and mm -hmm. so maybe we could just you know pick up some of that. Um, I don't know if they're allowed in residential, or but um, maybe we can use that as just a kickoff uh, our liquor laws, sure. because you know package stores during the whole debate were mentioned many many times yeah. Yeah. about package stores in Enfield, so and liquor stores, so maybe we could look at how they're zoned. And go from there. Just, just a thought. Okay. Commissioner Grillo. Thank you. Um, so, if you were to go into Mass, I know it's over the border, but, uh, and I think I know the place you're going to. You'll, you'll see exactly what's going on over there. Um, there are several different places. There's NCI. Uh, there, there, there's several places, but you'll notice that. Um, they're not in residential areas. They're not. Um, you got one off the highway. Most of them are off the highway. Okay, if you drive just going from here to the Vermont border, there's six of them. Six of them. Left side of highway, right side of highway. They're all in um, like industrial areas. They look to me like they're industrial areas and so forth because a lot of them places do cultivate it. Now, you got to remember, no matter how tight you make this building, and the reason why they're not in residential is there is a smell. There's a smell. You will notice that as soon as you walk into a building. So that's why I noticed most of them aren't. They're old warehouses. They're old um, the broken down buildings, um, but they're not in residential. They're more or less an off the highway thing. I think it's more of an advertising thing. That's why they have them. Um, wow, I I don't know where you would place one in Thompsonville that would be sufficient. I, that wouldn't be in 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 that criteria of, of a resident or. But I I, I don't know. Okay. It's all right. Thank you I, for I'm the just, thank you for the info. Just what I've seen yeah. over the border. Commissioner DeGray. Um, I know that. This is going to be a highly regulated industry within the state. It's not going to be something where people think, oh, it's just going to walk down the street and it's going to be like every smoke shop you see. It's not that. Um, I know in Lenox, right on their main street with all their shops, there's a little store. I thought it was a bakery. I'm dumb. <laughs> all right. I'm like, oh, there's a guy spray. And I'm like, no, you don't want to. Why is there a policeman there? Why is he sitting there like he's guarding a door? Duh. It's, it was a, a cannabis shop. They are highly regulated. I think the state's going to give us guidelines on um, how regulated they want it. Um, Ten years down the road, they may loosen these things up. They may even tighten it up, especially since everything that's been happening in the drug world uh, with all these overdoses. So I do, I do know there's one right up in Springfield by the gas station, the big gas station near the Basketball the Hall, Hall of Fame. Fame. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I just noticed that. Oh, about the car dealerships? Right yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, they are right off exits so that people can get to them, mm -hmm. get out. So um, I think I don't want to see it in a residential area. I don't want to see it near a school. I, you know, I think we do have to really think about this 
carefully, but you know, if it is a retail business that comes here, we don't want it, you know, we have to think about them as a retail, where would they want to be? And like I said, the ones that I've seen out in the Berkshires, they're little stores, they're right on their main streets. They're right, it doesn't seem to affect the other businesses. But then again, we have been, it, it, and then the if, retail does not have to be with the cultivation. Right. It, Some cases it might separate, want to be. But and there it, might be a right. cultivator that wants to come, and we have to think about right. that. Right. So it's almost like we've got to think two different separated. things. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, to Commissioner DeGrade's point, uh, the Department of Consumer Protection has regulation of adult use cannabis effective January 26, 2022. It's 56 pages. <laughs> if you'd like, I could I could send yeah. it to you. Would you please? Yeah, Laura, you have some weekend reading. <laughs> yes, could you please? There you go. In case you can't sleep, uh, you know, <laughs> hey, uh, that would be helpful. You, I you think could that use would... the you could use the regulations and the product if you wanted. <laughs> okay. there you go. Commissioner Petronella, go ahead. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Laurie, I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think you had said that most of the towns in in Connecticut. Uh, uh, chose not to opt out, that, that they're pretty much, the majority of the towns are, are in on this, correct? I, I think it's all over the place. I keep seeing different numbers, but yeah. um, there's been plenty that have opted out. Okay. I think that they're probably the smaller towns. Yeah. Yeah, I saw like in, in this sample that you gave us, I think Woodstock opted out, and uh, I think there's another one. Um, you know, when dealing with this, this this is a business that is a destination business, meaning yeah. if you build it, they will come. You could put this place on the moon and you know what? The right. people are going to find a, a way to get there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, again, I, I'm not a big fan of putting it in, in plain view of, you know, let, let, you know, take take the exit uh, in Enfield where the cannabis store is, you know, where, where you see the big sign out there and things like that. I mean, it, it's, it's an identity thing that I'm just not a big fan of. Uh, but uh, again, you could put this thing in an industrial area. If you build it, they will come. They'll, they'll find it. They'll get there so one way, shape or form. Um, uh, uh, so I, I, I'm just all for the, you know, something like an industrial area for for this and, and, and out of the way of retail where uh, people are, are driving into retail areas with uh, children and so forth and exposing them to, to that. I, I'm just not for that. Yeah. Thank you. Commissioner Petronella, where do we, you've got some comments from all of us. I mean, yeah. is that enough to help work on this with us? I mean, I'm not sure what we should do at this point on this. I, I think we've got sort of a, a direction to go in and we could uh, do some studies from some other towns. Um, I did want to say that I have had a tour of the INSA in East Hampton, Mass. Um, and that is where the, it is a grow house and retail operation. And you don't smell a thing until you get inside. The, the scrubbers are high tech. The workers are PhDs, yeah. uh, chemists, biologists. Um, the grow house is, you definitely smell it when you're inside, but um, you do not smell a thing outside. It's in an old warehouse. You don't even know it's there. It's in the back. There's this one little sign on a door in the back, and you don't even know it's there. Um, it is very secure. Security is one of their biggest uh, expenses. And let me tell you, it is extremely secure. This is not something that somebody's just going to walk into and right. and rob or something. So, um, you know, and, and as... We've all said this is going to be highly regulated from the state, way more than we will ever be able to regulate it. We're just looking for the proper location, right. essentially. Right. So this, with that said, I, th I think that Ben and I can uh, work on this and, and at least give you something to work with Great. for further discussion. Thank you. All right, based on that, I'll take a motion to table this item, because so we, we definitely want to keep this on the agenda. We don't want it to fall off. Motion made by council, uh, Councilman. <laughs> Almost. Oh Almost. <my. laughs> and I'm bringing back memories. <laughs> Commissioner Alimo, seconded by Commissioner Petronella to uh, table this item. And thank, thank you, staff. Thank you. 
All right, this time I have the privilege of the chair. Um, I'd like to place in the name of nomination John Petronello to be the new Secretary of the Planning and Zoning. And I want to personally thank him, John, for, for, for standing up and agreeing to do this. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, the chair really does appreciate this. So I'm taking the privilege of putting his name in nomination. I know it was just seconded by uh, Commissioner Alimo um, that um, John Petronello will be the new Secretary of Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, and um, is there a motion to move nominations be closed? So moved. So moved by Seconded. Commissioner DeGray, second by Commissioner I'm Higley. I'm pretty happy about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Higley. Um, I would have to say Karam's last name again. <laughs> so the current secretary, the temporary secretary, please call the roll on this. Oh, sure. Oh, here, here, here. Uh, Lou Fiore. John Petronello. Uh, Lindy DeGray, John Petronello. Uh, Jenny Higley. John Petronella. John Petronella. Uh, John Petronella. <laughs> John Petronella. Vinny, uh, oh. Yeah, no, Vinny can vote on this because yes. this is a Vinny officer. Grillo. John Petronella. Karam Majdumar. Hey. Petronella. <laughs> and Christian D. Antonio. John Petronella. Thank you. John, thank you. We'll pick that up uh, basically. I do appreciate that. So, so um, Linda, hold on. I one other to, thing I, I need. I, I just wanted to say, Linda, you have to stay on until you can say Quran Majmudar. <laughs> <laughs> and then you could give it to John. No, sorry. It's too late. It's John. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just want to go through our liaison appointments one more time because I did notice, and, and that probably was me, the person who, uh, redid our, who did our minutes, probably didn't pick up what we were doing. I'm sure I messed up. I'm sure it wasn't that person. So I want to go through our liaisons again to make sure we have them correct in the record, because um, I really didn't spell it out in the minutes. Um, for the plan of conservation and development, it is Karan Mujmadar and myself as yes. chairman. Anybody? No, no one wants to replay. Okay. <laughs> the TIF is Commissioner Alimo. Correct. Okay. The um, economic development is. Who, was, it, was it you, Ginny? I think so. Okay, that's what. So Ginny, Ginny Higley is the uh, Commissioner Higley is the liaison for economic development, and the uh, uh, capital region of government liaisons that are going to be on the next council agenda because they have to be council approved. Is yeah, they, they do. Is uh, Commissioner Alimo and Commissioner Petronella. So if you can please work with, um, I guess Heather McCarthy. You get that on the next council. Yeah, the next council agenda. Because I'm pretty sure, almost positive, they have to be council approved. Does that, um, that, that is that how we remember it? Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think I was already on Krog. They may have already approved. Yeah, you are. We do it again. Yeah, we do it again. We do it again. We have to do it again every uh, two years. It's one of those things I, I look forward to. So, yeah. uh, so on TIF, TIF is meeting, and we're making progress. Okay, great. Yep. We did the, uh, um, when is the next uh, POCD meeting? Do you know, Lori? Third Wednesday in the month. Third Wednesday in the month. Yep. Thank you. I think I missed the last one. Yep. yep. Okay. I was there. All right. Uh, any correspondence? Any commissioner's correspondence? Director of Development Service report? Anything tonight, Lori? So I... We received a letter. Um, so 11 Shaker Road is the development of a uh, new school. And the, there was a gentleman that uh, is adjacent to the property that is unhappy with the, 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 the detention basin. Um, actually, it's just a, a, a gully around the whole property because it's going to, he believes it's, it's going to be putting water directly in close proximity to his septic system. So um, prior to this commission, we talked about it and we said that, you know, we didn't want to do the field change that he wanted, which was basically not to have this, the uh, infiltration basin close to his property because, it, because other people may not have uh, agreed to that during the special permit. So, um, He's just submitting a letter to the commission for the record. Um, and for the record, I will tell you that I discussed this with um, Tim Kuhn, who was the, uh, the, the uh, engineer 
that designed the system and he says he's he's he stands by his calculations that it shouldn't be a problem so I, i'll just pass this out to you i'm just telling you that we will put we'll put this in you know the concern in the uh, file and it because i you should be aware that this is occurring okay so i'm just going to pass it out to you okay. quick question laurie it was the tenant of that property who complained is this the Owner of he's, the he's the owner who lives next door to he owns the 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 property immediately okay. adjacent to so but and is he the lives owner just of on the other property. side of it it is the owner okay because yeah. last time it was just the tenant well which kind of made it little it i yeah i don't yeah. it's it is the owner okay that's so, all just yep. curious so i'll just pass these out for you thank you Oh, you had a question? I, I actually did. I don't know if I missed it. It was actually uh, a question for for staff about the mini mobile. Is that something I can ask? Sure. Sure. Um, why, why don't you wait? Give me one second. And you can ask it in the next bucket. Yeah. Uh, any applications to be received? Uh, the only new application in is a uh, flood, flood permit application for... Um, work on Orlando Drive for the town of Enfield. A bridge uh, repair and replacement of a culvert. So I take it I'll be in our next, one's, next meeting's packet? Okay. Now, go ahead. Thank you. Well, I apologize if I missed anything. Um, on that mini mobile, when we approved it, I'm not mistaken, didn't we only allow them two containers high? I think we allowed three. I think we, it was a stimulation that we were yeah. at two. What, what, what happened is, is we allowed them two in the original approval. Then they came back several months later because they wanted more space and they wanted to go up and, and to 24 and, and the, the commission approved it. Uh, okay. I voted against it. Yeah, okay. Did that's why I'm saying I must. Did I miss that meeting because I don't Man. remember us full. And you might have. I, I'm sorry. I don't recall. I'd have okay. to go back and I, check the. Record. I didn't remember voting. That's why I asked because I drove by and I seen them three, and then I also thought they were all going to be the same color containers, and you got reds and greens and yellows and blue. You got every color. They're there. They were supposed to be one color. I, yeah, I agree with that. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. But sorry. Th that's the only reason why I asked. <laughs> I didn't. If uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Petronelli, um maybe I don't re recall that mm -hmm. second. I remember our first meeting with it, and that was the reason why I asked. So I may have been mm -hmm. absent. I'm going to go back and check, and um, because I don't think I would have. I did that either. For and, the, and are they using only 20 percent of the site for storage? right it's probably far more than that well because we were saying that the three containers were going to go over the building and we're, we're right about that that's why i thought we denied it and did the balloon test and everything else and but okay so it sounds like if i may this sounds like if i may we have some concerns from some commissioners about what's happening and maybe the zoning enforcement officer needs to just take, you know, we're not, we're not implying that they're doing anything out of the specs, but there's been some concerns because they came in twice, it sounds like, and they've made some adjustments. So if staff with the, can work with the zoning enforcement officer to kind of, you know, what's going on? And then maybe get back to us next meeting. That would be great. Does that sound reasonable to everybody? Yeah. 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 Sure. Yep. Yeah. It's not that it's a big, it just, nope. I didn't want them to go against what we approved them for. That's like taking advantage. Absolutely. Uh, no, you're, you're absolutely correct. And that's, you know, what we need to be doing. We see these things like this. The staff doesn't see everything around town that, that we see. So we bring it to their attention and, and they, they, you know, check it out for us. Absolutely. So on, on something like that, the staff, I was going to wait. I'm not, I'm sure, I don't think they did it, but maybe to wait for weather. Um, the Jersey Mike's Starbucks building, I think one of the conditions, and I know it was, one of the conditions of approval was a sidewalk coming down from the sidewalk on 190. Did that did that get in? Yeah. Is it okay? Thank you. That is a good lot, lot tonight. Are we all set. I make a motion to adjourn.
Motion made by Vice Chairman DeGray. Is there a second? Second. Second, second. second by uh, uh, <laughs> Vice Chairman Higley. Um, we adjourned meeting at... Uh, oh, all those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. I'm sorry. Here I am. I want to go home. Yeah. Yes. Unanimous. We adjourned at 9.54. Three. Sorry about that. That's okay.